opening day may be behind us, but game two will prove to be no letdown here tonight. We got a marquee pitching matchup here from Fenway Park as the Pirates and Red Sox will play here in Boston. And welcome into the booth, Joe Block and Bob Walk with you here tonight. Yeah, we're excited for this one after the Pirates drop the opener, a chance to even things up here tonight. And, you know, I think uh, the atmosphere is, is very much uh, electric, even though it is a chilly night here in Boston. And Jamison Tyone, uh, counted on as the number two starter, he's going to get his chance to kind of start to show what he did last season. Well, I'll tell you what, Joe, you know, last year I thought that he showed us that he's uh, really good for a young guy of uh, putting aside all the stuff that's going around, uh, you know, around him, you know, the, the hoopla, uh, so to speak, of the opening series here in Fenway Park, historic ballpark. You know, I think he's going to be able to push all that aside and really focus on what he does best, and that's go after those hitters, be aggressive, very efficient pitch count, and, of course, he has the great stuff. Yeah, he was talking about how much uh, in awe of Fenway Park he was. Obviously, he'll have to get down to business tonight, and on a cold night, how is that going to affect him? Here it's going to be in the 30s probably at game time. Well, I think it'll be okay with him. I know last year he came up in the middle part of the year, so we didn't get to see him really do a lot of cold weather work. <laughs> so uh, I am interested to, to watch him, but he's got the uh, Canadian blood in him a little bit, so that, that should help out. And I've always thought when it's cold, it favors the pitching. And he'll have a tough opposition tonight on the mound for the Red Sox. Chris Sale will make his Sox debut. And the Pirates will stack up plenty of righties against the Southpaw here tonight. Pirates and Red Sox coming up from Boston.
and the, you know with Chris Sale uh, I guess he he dyed his socks <laughs> you know uh, white socks now with the Red Sox after the trade and uh, he's going to be a big part of this Red Sox rotation. No oh, absolutely he's, he's going to be a very important cog in their machine. I mean this guy has got a great arm and he's already proven what he can do. Uh, he's one of those guys and I thought that uh, I think it was Frazier said it best that the way he's got that little you know the way he throws across his body kind of a left handed Arietta that I mean he's got that kind of arm too. he can really bring it likes to work fast. Uh, we might try slowing him down stepping out on him a little bit and the Pirates have loaded up their lineup tonight to face uh, the lefty and look the Pirates were very good against lefties last year best in baseball terms of winning percentage but they just didn't face that many the fewest in all of baseball last year Yeah, they didn't have the, the opportunities that they need but when they did get them they were able to come through uh, they they really have proven themselves against left handed pitching and uh, hopefully tonight even though sale is a very tough left hander the numbers we just saw are going to be uh, the winners they're going to prove out Yeah, five time all star for uh, the White Sox now with the Red Sox and Tyone will oppose him tonight lineups first pitch from Boston coming up next right here on Root Sports. Fenway Park in Boston, game two of the season. They do have clam <laughs> chowder in the stands. Do they really? But yeah, they oh, walk around with it, same as the hot chocolate, <laughs> except where it, it, it says chowder <laughs> instead of hot chocolate. I thought that was great. Saw that uh, opening day. Great way to stay warm here tonight. And let's take a look at our RAV4 lineup. First for the visiting Buckos, and Jordy Mercer will get the nod atop the order. Against the lefty tonight, Marte and McCutcheon to follow. Polanco back in the field and left with Freeze, then Cervelli, Harrison, and Bell flip flop from opening day. And Adam Frazier's the DH batting ninth. Well, take a, a, another quick look at Sales' numbers. As I said before, he really has that combination of good stuff and then the, the little bit of an odd delivery where he drops down a little bit. Not, not sidearm, but a good three quarters, and he can add movement because of that. And it just Gives those guys a little different look, and that the the fact that he's uh, what six six, uh, that gives him a little different look right there. And uh, you know, even though he's a Florida guy, got the shirt sleeves on. No tonight. sleeves, you like that. Sandy Leon, the catcher. So there's only the two. The only two guys are warm to the pitcher and the catcher. <laughs> They're doing something. Everybody else is standing around watching. Here's the Honda defense for the Bo Sox tonight. Chris Young is in there, not Mookie Betts. He is ill, as is Brock Holt, who was sent home today. Benintendi and Bradley joined him in the outfield. Sandoval, Bogarts, Pedroia, Moreland. Normal four around the horn. 
with Leon doing the catching of Chris Sale. They're standing out there on defense, it's going to start getting a little cool. Chris Sale's first pitch as a member of the Red Sox. Especially as quick as he works, he'll stay warm. There's that 96 right out of the chute. 40 degrees at game time. But no rain expected here tonight, and that's all that really matters. Jordy Mercer, career, as you saw just a moment ago, 3 11 against lefties. And it did very well as the leadoff hitter against lefties when he was called upon last year in that role. Since we're in American League the Park, he only had to move one spot in the lineup. And to go from nine to one. Just took a step back, is all. To that one spot. Well, you know, there's a lot of times the second game of the season uh, kind of be a letdown a little bit, but uh, they've uh, they're loading it up tonight as they do pretty much every night here in Boston. But the, a lot of anticipation for sale. Yes, absolutely. Uh, every time he's done anything, they just they put his face up on the scoreboard as he's warming up, that sort of thing. Uh, big round of applause. Slow roller to Bogarts. He was bundled up tonight. Wow. Mercer almost beat it out. Bogart's uh, a little slow charging that ball. Well, Mercer running it hard all the way. It was an off speed pitch, breaking ball. He was kind of maybe reaching forward a little bit. He just kind of lunge forward, and I think that gave him a little head start coming out of the box. Man, that was bang, bang. Starling Marte. Hitless in the opener. 311 hitter last year. Well, Pirates trying to even things up after the 5 3 Boston win. And both teams in the opener had a hard time scoring early. And the old adage is, you know, against the very good pitchers, right? You want to get to them early. I guess that would apply here, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, reality is get to them whenever you can. <laughs> yeah, early would be nice, you know, puts them on the defensive a little bit. Anytime, uh, even if you're, the, and I have experience with this, even if you're a mediocre starting pitcher, if you get behind early by a couple of runs, now that forces you to be more, a little fine. You know, you, your room for error is now taken away from you real early in a ball game, and it, it really it kind of puts you under a gun, makes it much more difficult to attack the strike zone if you fall behind early. You can really get to where now you're nitpicking a little bit, and and now you get that possibility of things snowballing on you. And get a couple runs in the first, and maybe by the third or fourth, you can throw up a, a three or something, break the game open, because you get a couple of walks, because now the starting pitcher is starting to worry about throwing too many good strikes. And then also I think probably a little dump, double benefit for Tyone. Uh, you said it, you know this uh, first uh, start of the season trying to get an early lead. Yeah, that's the other side of that coin. If, if you get the early lead now you can become even more aggressive than you normally would be. You've got some room for error. That's, so, not, that's not fair. No, that's that same breaking ball that it had Mercer out, uh, out in front and he got it off the end of the bat. This one breaking a little further down and in and got right underneath Marte's bat. So two up and two down. Andrew McCutcheon. First time these two have faced each other in the regular season. They have. Squared off once before in an all star game and then prior to that in high school. And McCutcheon has gotten the better of sale in both of those occasions. A single in the all star game. Back in 2012 in KC and then. When Fort Meade High School uh, faced Lakeland High School. Andrew McCutcheon hit home run. And they meet again.
good results with that little sweeper, isn't he? So you speed the or you slow the bat down with the off speed pitch. Get the hitter waiting a little bit now, so he's not so far out front, and then you go up on his hands with a mid 90 pitch. And 97 on that last one. There's a reason Sales a, a five time all star. <laughs> good stuff. Good command. Executes his pitches. Back to Bradley. And Sale, a one, two, three inning in his Red Sox debut. Jamison Tyone will take the hill here in the bottom of the first. Boston coming up and a lot of pirate faithful here. And uh, here's who they'll see tonight for the Red Sox. Dustin Pedroia atop the order with the rookie Andrew Benintendi to follow. Xander Bogarts and cleaning up the DH, Hanley Ramirez. Mitch Moreland, Chris Young in there for the ill Mookie Betts, Bradley Sandoval, and Leon. Bottom third of John Farrell's nine tonight. Take a look at uh, Tyone's numbers from last season. The one thing that really jumps out at you just 17 base on balls, over 100 innings of work. For a young man, a hard thrower, that's pretty darn good. One of the best walk rates for a rookie all time. It's supposed to be wild, right? <laughs> when you first come up. Yeah, yeah, especially if you're like, you're known as a power type guy, good arm. Tyone, who came here on Sunday, was in awe of Fenway Park and talked about how this is how baseball should be. And uh, Monday, agree. experiencing opening day, uh, lining up on the chalk lines, getting to take it all in. Now, tonight, all business. And he's ahead of Dustin Pedroia. Yeah, I mentioned during our open, that was one of the things that really struck me last year was how. You know he can be. You can see him before a game, maybe not even a game he's pitching, but he, you know he's walking around the ballpark during batting practice. You can see him looking up and thinking, "Wow, this is really something else. I'm in the big leagues. This is great." But once he gets out in the middle of the diamond and starts pitching, it's like he's been here three or four years. Now he and Garrett Cole were standing in the monster and looking out there and posted a picture to Instagram. And I mean, you know, these guys are just about everybody. This is the first time. Especially all the native pirates, uh, you know, first time at Fenway Park, oldest ballpark in the major leagues. Now Pedroia ahead in the count, 97 from Tyone. Yeah, there's the green monster, 37 foot wall there in left field, hand operated scoreboard. They've added a few advertisements over the years, but it's been there a long, long time. For an opposing pitcher, I imagine it would be 
difficult to try to prevent uh, those fly balls from clanging off of it and becoming extra base hits. Yeah I would uh, think that would be on your mind a lot. It probably shouldn't be. No I've seats a, added in. Always been a big believer in trying to ignore things like that and pitch your game. And he strikes out Pedroia. Well, because you're going up against you know one of the league's best or you're they got a great lineup or whatever. Just you got to do what you do. 96 from Tyone. And our Point Park tweets and everyone ready to see Jamison Tyone. Baseball is back at Tyone's first start of the year. Tyone, one of baseball's better rookies last year. This one. Might be one of the better ones this year. Andrew Benintendi at that three run home run in the opener. That was the difference. Made some nice plays on defense. Yeah. Good afternoon. I'm curious to see how. Tylen works to the lefties too. He used that change up a little bit last year, not just the curveball as an off speed offering. It looks like he's got a little extra zip tonight too. It's 96 and 97 with regularity. Play getting the second out. Nice play. Right on my Tyone. Looking over at him, nodding his head, pointing at him. It's always nice to uh, give your defense some, some props. You like that? Props? Yeah. I'm hip. <laughs> Two away for Xander Bogarts. Not a word I normally throw out there. But yeah, it seemed appropriate there. Yeah. There's no, there's no rules, somewhere. no rules. Bogarts, the a Reuben-born shortstop of the Red Sox, so accomplished early in his career. Well, you know what? The you know, the Red Sox went from 78 wins last year to you know, 93, winning the division. And in large part because they had a lot of young players that really became very good players and some stars. And the Pirates won 78 games last year. They need a lot of these young players to become very good players and stars if they want to make that kind of leap here this year. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you got right now, there's three guys in our starting rotation, for instance, that 12 months ago were pitching in the minor league. So. They need to step up their game. They all have the ability. They've shown that, especially Tyron, to uh, pitch well at this level and need them to. Relying on them. And even in uh, the lineup tonight, uh, Josh Bell, technically a rookie still. Yeah. Adam Frazier's first full major league season. You know me and those starting so I got this starting rotation so important mm -hmm. to me. And Marte. Able to haul it in, so both pitchers living up to the billing through an inning. Both teams go down in order. Second coming up from Fenway.
for baseball between the Pirates and Red Sox here on Root Sports. I'm Robbie and Smikowski. Well, Gregory Polanco is getting set to lead things off. And as we showed you on the broadcast on Monday, he paid a pretty nice tribute to one of his idols and mentors, Big Poppy, David Ortiz. This is what he did when he stepped into the box for his very first at bat here at Fenway Park. Just like Big Poppy used to do it. I asked him about it. He said the first thing he did was go to first base coach Kamara Barti and asked, hey, should I do it? He said, absolutely, you should do it. I asked him why he wanted to do it. He said, hey, it's a tribute and a thank you for everything he has done to me throughout my entire career. And I really wanted to do it for my first ever at bat here at the place that Poppy called home for so many years. Guys? Oh, that's neat. And, you know, Polanco kind of making his way, rising up now in the game of baseball. Power hitting lefty batter. And now the cleanup man against one of the best lefties in baseball, despite being a lefty batter. And that's no surprise the way that Polanco hit lefties last year. He was in that top 10 in slugging for lefties against lefties last year. So it doesn't really matter to him. I mean, he's he showed in the first four months of no, last I, season he can yeah, hit anybody. I believe that if he stays healthy this year, nothing's going to matter to him. He's going to have a big year. Got off to that great start last mm -hmm. year. First half the season or so and then kind of tailed off at the end but hopefully he can build on that and, and really put together maybe even 100 RBI I, mean, I think he's got that kind of ability add a little bit to the home runs certainly has that kind of power one of the uh, very few to hit with uh, 20 plus home runs at, at such a young age for the Pirates over the years. So in there tonight against Sale doesn't matter. David Freeze, you'll see him a lot, obviously at third, but uh, against the lefty especially, he'll be in there every night. One of the best last year at hitting lefties. There's definitely some youth on this uh, Pirate team this year. Michael Jage dropping a little bit, but uh, see that 337. No reason not to have high hopes. Yeah, he really does handle the lefties. Ooh. Paul Nart working the plate tonight. Yeah, it looked like it had the plate. Yeah. High enough also. Up to right. And Young. Can't get to it. So David Freeze is our first base runner of the night. One on with one out here in the second. And a look at our Barrel Automotive League leaders and the all time leaders in on base percentage here at Fenway Park. Francisco Cervelli is atop that list, even ahead of Ted Williams. <laughs> I like that. I mean, he gets out more than half the time at the Jose Abreu, the great. Slugger of the White Sox and Will Clark, who was one of the very best in for a shorter period of time, but the uh, he dropped that cape on you. Yeah. But Cervelli ahead of them all. Of course, all those years with the Yankees uh, playing here at Fenway. Now, I don't know if uh, if Cervelli keeps that up, would they put <laughs> his number next to Ted's up there? I don't I think so. I don't think so. Yeah. The splendid splinter. Absolute one of the greatest baseball players ever. And Mines loved hearing him talk about baseball. Watching that on TV, reading what he would say. That's Cervelli. Trying to hit a little more power this year healthy. I think that's gonna that power is gonna come back as long as it stays healthy. Just the one home run last year. He really scalded a ball on Monday afternoon here. That was an out, and then there's a little pop fly off the monster ended up uh, getting him the double that he probably deserved the first time around. And where he hit that first one, that might have been three bases. He would have got a nice hop off the bullpen fence. Which 
probably would have gotten. Or it angles in like that. A lot of nooks and crannies here at Fenway. Now even. This is wedged in here. There's a nook. <laughs> or is that a cranny? I don't know. Yeah, that's a nook. It's a nook. There's a that's a cranny. Yeah. That's that wall where he, he would have hit off that side wall. It would have kicked to the left, and depending on how far it rolled. Yeah, and the left fielder, in that case, Ben Intendi. I mean, you can't get there to no, back up a ball soon he, enough. He might have had three bases. Ball was caught, so it didn't matter. Yeah, this park built in 1912, and uh, was underwent a, a big renovation in the 30s, and then, of course, about maybe 10 years ago or so, put together again and modernized. And were the foul poles lit up? Looks like it does. Yeah, it kind of, kind of does. Yeah, I think there's a maybe sort of a reflection. Sale registers a second strikeout. He's got a whole lot in that bag of tricks, doesn't he? He knew it. Cervelli with that wry smile. Uh, you see those bright foul poles. That's called the pesky pole right down the right field line 302 feet from home plate but it gets out in a hurry. Yeah, it doesn't really make a corner there. <laughs> it no. just keeps going. Really uh, one of the otter shaped right fields you'll see. It's probably the only place I would imagine that it is that the right fielder has more room going to his left than he does to his right. Johnny Pesky, if that name's familiar, does have a pirate tie. He was an old uh, pirate coach when Steve Blast was playing. He was a, a coach for the Pirates, a uh, long-time Red Sox hitter, but didn't hit for a lot of power. So there is his number six. Mel Parnell was a broadcaster and his old teammate, and uh, he would nickname that the Pesky Pole because uh, the very few home runs that Johnny Pesky it's actually hit here around that pole. were wrapped right around that right field pole, and they still call it that to this day. Harrison didn't think that was a strike. What do you think? According to our strike zone, it just nipped the corner. The couple of threads on the ball kind of nipped the corner. <laughs> Time call. We talked earlier about Sale, how quick he likes to to work and might have to step out on him a few times so he doesn't get in that real fast rhythm that he likes. John Farrell, Red Sox manager. Well, Willis to his left, pitching coach. One and two on Harrison. Up and down this lineup, everybody having good numbers against lefties uh, for the most part, and Harrison no exception. But Sale is the exception. He's no ordinary. Well, yeah, there, there's a few <laughs> lefties around the league that kind of have to throw those numbers out the window. I mean, they're, they're still relevant, but just not as relevant as they are to the, uh, to the average Joe. He is no average Joe, Chris Sale. Pirates get the game's first hit. Still scoreless.
here on Root Sports after the Bucks and Sox play in the afternoon. Watch the Pens take on the Devils as they open up their season ending road trip in New Jersey. So join us for Pens pregame presented by Levin Furniture and Mattress at 630 right here on Root Sports. And on our UPMC scoreboard no score here in the second. Yeah the Bruins they just clinched a playoff spot last night. Over at the Garden. A couple miles from here. Hanley Ramirez. Going to get more of the DH duties. 111 runs batted in last year. Remember when he was the Marlins shortstop? And oh, yeah. A little speedy guy, and now really. Now he's a DH. He's a DH. Big time run producer. And he has the Red Sox first hit tonight. Well placed ground ball. Fast ball has a little bit of down and sink to it. Designed to get a ground ball, but you can't control necessarily where they hit them. That one right in the hole. So Ramirez aboard. And his replacement at first base, Mitch Moreland. Signed from the Texas Rangers. Two home runs last year for Texas. And they've got the shift on them. Three men on the right side for the lefty pull hitter. And they're playing a third baseman as opposed to the other day. I, think they, uh, I guess I talked to Stan about that. Well, we saw what uh, for Leon, right? Uh, when he. Yeah, they they didn't play a third baseman, and so he pushed a bunt down that way. So now Mercer, the shortstop, ends up playing. Hey, well, in yeah, essence, yeah, well, he's short back, he's, third. You know, he's backed off now because of the count. He's gone to two and zero. Oh. I'll tell you after this pitch why he would do that. Not many hitters want to bunt two and zero. Oh. <laughs> two zero oh count. That's their count to like look for something in their sweet spot. So. You're playing the percentages. Yeah, you're playing the odds. Somebody lays down a bun on a 203 one. They're probably going to hear it from the dugout. <laughs> their own dugout. <laughs> yeah, their own dugout. <laughs> See now he's way off. Oh yeah, now it's three and no oh count. He's not bunting now. So now, now this is where he was playing the other day. Uh, what was it? With no count. Now the first pitch to Leon. Yeah. And as you can see in that shot, there is nobody at third base. So. Any bunt that direction, then it's going to be a base hit. You just have to bunt it hard to, you know, make sure you bunt it by the by the uh, mound. Or, you don't even want it by the mound. You want to bunt it hard right at where a third baseman would be standing. And Garrett Cole almost had a, a play on that ball. Yeah, it really wasn't bunted hard enough for it to serve its purpose, but still a difficult play for a pitcher to run over there and try to make that play. A good movement on that fastball. Now Cole on that opener uh, was cruising right along and uh, a little bit of uh, cunning by the Red Sox and a few hard hit balls and big bang boom it was five runs. It was kind of shaping up like he was going to go deep into the afternoon. Runner goes on three two. Marte have room and Ramirez retreats one out. And enjoy a craft beer sampling for the Pirates game this Tuesday, April 11th. Bucks hosting the Reds. Beer passport packages include a ticket at the Pittsburgh Baseball Club, a pregame beer sampling, and $5 in loaded value on your ticket. Visit pirates.com slash beer passport to get yours today. Might call in sick that day. Sounds like a good plan. I like that. 
That's a nifty cap right there, huh? Doesn't look like a necessarily a warm hat. But it's fun. I think some of the folks uh, they're not really they're not really feeling the uh, the elements now. I think your hat style. I should, on the other hand <laughs> should go toward warmth uh, this evening. Yeah, I'm, you've uh, you've nailed that. I left my parka at home. Going to be uh, into the 30s at some point during this game if it's not already there. It was a 40 degrees at first pitch. Yeah. We're doing all right though. Oh, it's fine while we're sitting. Now you could get a, a Wally hat. Now that's warm. Also very stylish. Now the, happen. Now, the parrot version. Yeah, now, the, now that's kind of, yeah. Well, that's like we wore last year on the first uh, sun, home Sunday. Except that mine was a wig. I remember hair like that. I mean, it was always warm. What's great is that the lady behind him made his hair look twice as big. Yeah, you can always wrap it up. Try to wrap this inning up. Around the horn. And Tayo rolling right along here through two innings. Nothing, nothing. Brought to you by Allegheny Health Network, the largest health system rated number one in the region for all the things that matter most. By Bordis and Bordis, official legal partner of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And by Kenny Ross, total confidence pricing. Let's go Bucks! And here at Fenway Park, they uh, celebrate all their pennants. Still bitter about 1903. <laughs> The Boston Americans beating the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates uh, back in the first World Series, 1903, over at Huntington Avenue grounds. The baseball grounds. Yes. Uh, Greg and I talked about that the other night. I said that the next ballpark should be called baseball grounds. Well, Whatever naming rights, they, it'd be cool if it was some kind of coffee company. You know, but, da -da -da, baseball grounds. Well, that's funny you said it. I used to uh, work in Jacksonville, Florida. And that's the name of the ballpark. Yeah, the baseball baseball ball. And it's right I next like to a, it's right next to a coffee manufacturer. Really? And they didn't buy the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that. Baseball grounds. The baseball grounds. Yeah. I mean, everything's a park or a field. Yeah. The different. old polo grounds. Do something different. Josh Bell out to right. Long ways to the fence that direction. Mm -hmm. Young hauls it in. That's all. They're probably off the green monster if he hits it the line. Yeah. yeah. He hit one off the monster last time around. Yeah, that ballpark, the Huntington Avenue grounds, that was torn down 105 years ago, and the Pirates have won more games there than they have here at Fenway Park. Just shows two to one. 
He won two games in the 1903 World Series there. It just shows you how infrequently that they played here. Yeah, the Boston Americans won that five games to three. Best of nine in the first World Series. But they didn't play in 04, is that right? That's right. That's how the story goes. So the Red Sox, uh, I guess they were the Americans back then, but they declared themselves champions because John McGraw, the Hall of Fame manager of the New York Giants, said, We are not going to play this upstart American League. They're an inferior league. So we are the champions. Nothing's that, changed, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> because that started about 1973, right, Bob? Right. When they had the, the DH? Actually, for me, it started in 19. 77. Oh, okay. Right. Frazier with that good speed. And he's going to beat it out. And there's still uh, some remnants. You know, you think about the history of Fenway Park and Greg Brown tweeted this. Uh, he went over to Northeastern University, and that is the site of the first World Series. You know, on the North Shore, we've got the site of Exposition Park still uh, up there in the parking lot there. Well, here in Boston, there's still commemoration of where the first World Series was played on this side when Deacon Philippe in the, was good, leading the Pirates. Good job, Greg. Yeah. Baseball historian. Oh, we all like the, the history of the game. It's, it's neat. And so, yeah, you know, the Red Sox and Pirates have been playing that up on social media. You know, the rematch of the 03 World Series. No one's alive from then, but, you know, Cy Young pitched in that, you know. Did he? Yeah. Really? Pirates beat Cy Young in the opener of that series. I mean, think about it. <laughs> That's neat. But only the second trip well, ever to what? Fenway Park. What I said the other day wasn't correct. Then. That we had never beat a Cy Young on opening day. Oh, that's great. <laughs> you met a Cy Young Award winner, not the, the man himself. <laughs> and an opener. That was the opening day of the, the postseason. Yeah, it's an opener. Yeah. Let's see if Frazier runs here. Not going. Well, Leon, a really good defensive catcher. And they have a statue of Cy Young there on uh, Northeastern's campus. Look at that. Yeah. All time leader in wins. He won 511 games in his career. <laughs> and uh, that's, Probably of course, started 100 games a year. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, <laughs> I pitch every other day pretty much back then. But that's neat that he went over there and uh, saw that. Then. Frazier started and stopped. Bradley came in but was able to recover. Sure sure hit that one. Pretty darn good. A little carry on it. And speaking of Cy Young, how about a Cy Young Award winner, Rick Porcello, the opening day starter of the Red Sox, receiving his award before the game here tonight. You know, that, that's an awfully nice looking award, but now that I've seen the statue. It should be like an Oscar with a miniature version of that statue, <laughs> like in bronze or something. Maybe, maybe write a, a so, letter to the yeah, commissioner. Yeah. Well, they've been giving those plaques for a long time. Yeah. I mean, you probably can't change it now. But they hang on the wall nicer that way. You know, uh, I've told this story before, but I went to Drebick's house down in, um, outside of Houston. Can't think of the name of it. That neighborhood where all like the golfers and everybody was from. <laughs> but anyway, and he was he had a little nice house there and he was giving us a tour and went to his office. I don't know why he needed an office, but he had an office. So I'm looking around and I'm thinking, well an office, that's a good place for his side long. Probably up on his wall here. And I didn't see it anywhere. And I said, Doug, where's your side young award? And he goes, I'm not sure and he started pulling drawers out. It was in a drawer. <laughs> He's a Cy Young Award winner, and he kept his award. I mean, that's something to be pretty much proud of, don't you think? He won that. It's a major award. Pedro Martinez, another great pitcher. Roger won a couple here too. Oh yeah. Roger Clemens, Rocket. Yet to uh, retire that number, though. They just retired Wade Boggs's number. 
because he went to the Yankees after <laughs> the Red Sox. See if Frazier tries to get into scoring position. Yeah, there's there's Boggs right next to Jackie Robinson, retired throughout baseball. Mo Vaughn wore that last for Boston. Montel down on strikes. Not to get much going against Chris Sale. Still scoreless. Here at Fenway, well, the guys a couple minutes ago were just talking about Wade Boggs, who had his famous number 26 retired here last season here at Fenway Park. Well, it's been shared by a number of former Pirates, including Brock Holt. Currently on the roster, obviously, he was sent home sick, so he is not here at the ballpark tonight. But check this out. There have been quite a few Pirates to wear that number 26 in a Red Sox uniform that also played for the Pirates. Freddie Sanchez, Orlando Merced, Ron Klein, Alejandro Pena, and, of course, Brock Holt, who we mentioned. Now, Brock wore the 26 for three years before he, before he switched to his current number 12. And Boggs, of course, Joe and Bob played 11 big league seasons here for the Red Sox. 2,098 hits in a Red Sox uniform of the 3,010 he had in his career. Now he was a great, great hitter. Now, ironically enough, he wore 12 with the Yankees, so <laughs> the Holt takes 12. But yeah, I mean, he uh, probably better off that uh, you didn't get a chance to face. Did you face him in the All Star game at all or anything? That's no, a, I, I faced him uh, quite a quite a bit. He was a minor leaguer same time I was. So I faced did. him coming up in the minor leagues a lot, a lot. Western Carolina League, Carolina League. Um, Maybe even in the Eastern League for a while. I'm not sure, but I know that uh, in A ball for sure I faced him. It, I mean, he was always just a good hitter, good contact, high line <laughs> drives all over the place. Yeah, they have, uh, you know, with this being the opening series. Love chicken. <laughs> that's a famous story. Google that one. Very, uh, very sure to eat chicken uh, before every game. But, uh, yeah, during the. Uh, between innings here, you know, with all the festivities around the opening series of the season. El Tiante, Louis Tiant, was honored uh, on the scoreboard and a big, robust round of applause for him. Oh, what a great pitcher, showman. A lot of fun to watch play. That, uh, he was uh, pitching, they were showing the, uh, I think, some World Series stuff up on the board. So that was the last time that I. Looted for American League team. That was before I saw the light. Oh. So I actually was a big Louis Tion fan. He had some pitches kind of like this one right here. You guys, whoop, fan on. And that little twist in his delivery, too. Yeah, he'd do a lot of things. <laughs> I remember his, uh, his post game interviews. He'd 
He's sitting there with his arm and ice and a big cigar. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jamison Tyone, unfazed tonight, he's faced the minimum. Give up a single to Hanley Ramirez, but erased him on a double play. Now the slimmer, Pablo Sandoval, injured, benched first, and then injured last year. Play for freeze, and that looked routine. Nice uh, defensive placement that time. Freeze uh, playing kind of right in the traditional spot where a hole would be between the shortstop and the third baseman. Playing well off the line, it was hit right at him. That's the thing we talk about, you know, shifts. Sometimes that's a shift. It's not as pronounced, but a little well, movement each way or another. Yeah, and, I mean, it's not. I think the reason we don't talk about it is because that's the kind of stuff they've been doing in baseball for. Since 1903, you know, moving like that, like where he's playing right now, a couple steps one way or yeah, another. It's the when the third baseman goes to shallow right field, it <laughs> kind of gets everybody's attention. Yeah, he's just playing off the line for a switch hitter batting left, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it really hard it, that, that ball, right? If you hit it up the left side anyway, it's going to be a double, even if you're standing over there. So you try to play the odds, right? Mm -hmm. The Pirates have been a, a more progressive team with shifts. Or you hit it up the right side. It's going to be extra bases, too. And that's the first extra base hit of the night for either team here as Leon doubles with two outs. Well, the Pirates uh, had that shift on and didn't play with a third baseman yes, or two days ago. This time they play it in a traditional manner. He rips one inside the first base bag. Out there and right, he's uh, he's had a couple of balls around the uh, rink out there, the boards. Yeah, you got to be a little careful. That ball doesn't slide along there and, and, and get by you. But if it gets down underneath the padding, I think a good chance it's going to stay put. Petroya, and they're going to. They tried to hold Leon, and he is out. He was held up at third. He ran through the stop sign and he's gunned out to end the inning. Good play started by Andrew McCutcheon out and right. Right from Andrew McCutcheon. A very strong and uh, right on the money. Nice little pickup by Cervelli on that play. As the ball ended up kind of being a short hop. And so Cervelli uh, with that catcher's glove had to kind of pick it out of the dirt, I think. And uh, did so successfully. And it was there uh, so early. The, the throw had, you know, good velocity on it. 
So Cervelli had time to get the ball and go all the way into foul territory and put that nice tag down. And Tyone loves it. Now Andrew McCutcheon and the Leon uh, went through the stop sign from Brian Butterfield. He put up the big two hands. Hey, hey, hold up. And uh, Andrew McCutcheon uh, out there in right field. You know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, will he be good out there in right? Well, why wouldn't he be? I mean, uh, and, you know, there'll be a learning curve, I guess, maybe here and there, the walls and things like that. But when it comes to just catching and throwing. Well, that was a nice throw yeah. he made right there. That, the, the, the thing that was impressive about it, the strength, he had something on it for sure. And uh, it was accurate enough that Cervelli didn't really have to do a whole lot once he was able to glove the ball. Just That's Brian Butterfield, third base coach. Shift it over and put the tag down. Make a great play, you lead off. Huh? Now how many times is no. <laughs> guy leads off the end because everyone points it out, that's why. <laughs> Look at our Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl. A lot of height on it. I mean, that's about as good as it gets. Mm -hmm. Nice play on both ends. Yeah, Cervelli's got to hold on to that ball. That's, 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 a, that's not easy. That's a tough play, tough catch for Cervelli to make. It's not that that nice long hop that you would prefer, but still, you know, it's a long th throw to the plate. Sometimes you got to deal with what you got. And Cervelli did a nice job picking that ball out of the dirt and getting that tag down. Good job on both ends. Keeps it scoreless. Battling here to lead off the fourth. Now it's full. We've not seen a walk issued tonight by either pitcher. Gregory Polanco on deck. And freeze here in the Pirates' fourth. Good shot, but right at Bogarts. One away. Can't hit it any better than that. One hopper. Chris Sale in his Red Sox debut, at much anticipated. Four players going to the Chicago White Sox in the offseason. Probably the biggest trade in baseball over the winter. And it turns out, you know, at least in the early going, the Red Sox, who really put together a, a very nice rotation, uh, David Price is out. Drew Pomerantz out for now. He'll probably be back soon. Falls a little bit more on Sales' shoulders. Ian Porcello in the early going. Looking pretty cold out there, isn't it? All these guys. Sale, you can see his breath. Polanco. He's really getting a little chilly. Well, the temperature isn't quite his uniform number. But hey, that's what you know you, you expect in April. And like you said, you know, working quickly. Staying warm. I would imagine for the hitters, though, uh, might be a, a little bit of a challenge, right? Especially if you get it in on the hands. Yeah, or... I mean, the hitters always complain about hitting in cold weather. <laughs> always. They hate it. So, you know, I don't know that it's really a true advantage uh, for the pitchers, but I do know you're warmer than anybody else because you're the only one, you're the catcher, the only one's doing anything. And I know how much the hitters complain about it, so there's kind of like a little mental thing you get going for yeah. you. Two. A good slider down and away with like a chase for strike three. Five strikeouts for Chris Sale. Two outs in the Pirates' fourth. 
Kids days are back when the Pirates host the Braves this Sunday at 135. All kids 14 and younger take home a batting glove. Thanks to Dick Sporting Goods. Go to Pirates.com slash Kids Days and get your tickets today. It's fashionable and useful. I think it's a forecast right now says it's going to be 70 in Pittsburgh on Sunday. Nice day there today. Where's this? No sale. A sale has been ahead on just about every hitter tonight. Three's singled off him back in the second. When Sale came up, he was drafted in 2010 and uh, worked out of the bullpen at first. And you know, there was thought that you know, maybe because of his delivery, that he wouldn't be able to stay healthy. So the White Sox actually kept him in the bullpen those first couple of years. Back to Bogarts again. One, two, three inning. And the pitcher's duel is on. Drive Rav fourth inning. Toyota, what drives you? Second game of the season here from Fenway Park. And a good pitching battle tonight as advertised. Stock up on some goodies and settle in. Folks seated at the top of the green monster and left. That's a cool seat. It is tonight. <laughs> Literally, yeah. Got some friends uh, be sitting up there tomorrow. Ron and Brandon Fields from South Park. Got to see them today. Some Bucko fans here from Pittsburgh area, and uh, I think uh, we've seen a lot of them bouncing around. Yeah, a lot of folks here today. Uh, made this opening season or series here against the Red Sox. It's definitely a baseball destination, Fenway Park. Well, if you want to see the Buckos play here, this has only been the second series ever that you have that opportunity. So, Let's see, can't wait for Friday when the Pirates have the home opener. Got to come out here. By the way, a few uh, a few standing room tickets uh, do remain available for Friday afternoon's opener. Andrew Benintendi. 
one out. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Doing a great job of getting the hitters to, to make contact with his pitches in the locations he wants them to. And that ball right at the bottom outside part of the strike zone. Sandra Bogart's lined up. Just 44 pitches so far. Well, what would your old partner say? <laughs> Just a bit outside. Bit outside. <laughs> Just need to get the uh, big thick glasses on the tile out there. Seen that movie in a long time. I think I'm going to have to take another look at it. Major League. What a classic. Find something new about it every time you watch it. Slowly hit. Great bare hand play by David Fries. He needed to be perfect to get the out, and we'll see if the Red Sox want to challenge. Yeah, they're going to hold up and look at that one. They'll get the word from their clubhouse. I'm sure they get somebody looking it over right now. Watching this replay, we're seeing. I'll be letting the Sox know whether they should challenge, and it looks like they said challenge it. What do you think? Well, very close, but generally speaking, let's look at our Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl. Great play by Freeze. He had to be perfect just to have a chance. Bogarts runs well too. It looks like he's safe by a whisker. I don't know. I, I had a hard time with it. I don't Man. know. I'm gonna say they're gonna call him out. I well, mean, can you see where? I, I mean, I, now what they're going to do, though, they're going to they're going to stop it and go frame at a time and look at it. There's multiple so, angles. Yeah, they, they, they have access to all the different angles that are here at the but park. If they can freeze it, then they can look at two different things. They can look at the ball. They can look at the foot. When is the ball in the back of Bell's glove? There. I think he's out. Oh gosh. <laughs> now, if they would have called him safe, I'd say I think he's going to be called safe. I think they're going to leave it alone. I think, I think, you think it'll stay. stand. I think it'll stand. Okay. Yes. Now this year baseball has created an initiative to try to keep the replays under two minutes before a decision is rendered. Also there's freeze getting a look at his work. So this is where I like if you're tie on on a cold night. Yeah you, you got to stay just busy standing out on the mound. Here comes the call. He's out. Call stands as you said Bob. On a terrific play by freeze. And that means the Red Sox are out of challenges now. John Farrell can't ask for a crew chief review on any non home run ball to the eighth inning now. So that changed it's moved up an inning from last year. There it is again. Route. Too close to call. There's no conclusive evidence to overturn the call. That's what stands means, and that's that's folks. exactly right. At home, especially in the Red Sox side, saying tie goes the runner. Yeah. <laughs> they did it in a minute 15. Nice call from New York. Hanley Ramirez is one of the three Red Sox hits tonight. Batting with the base is clear thanks to that great play by Freeze. That stings. Here's some of those rule changes that uh, are now in effect 
for the 2017 season. Yeah, you, uh, managers can elect to not throw the pitches on an intentional walk. Now that's meant to speed up the game. The 30 second time limit to challenge. That is a pretty firm but not absolute time limit. Retreat review now in the eighth. And uh, the pitcher, the Carter caps rule. You can't, <laughs> you can't hop and leave the air. And leave your foot from the air. You can drag your foot, of course, from the rubber, but you can't hop into the air and then deliver the pitch closer to home plate. So oh, kangaroo's delivery. Yeah. Those are all good changes. I really like. Uh, I have no problem with any of those. I'd like to even see the 30-second rule moved up a little bit, even go quicker. Well, you and I have talked about that, but at least it's a step in the right oh, direction. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, those are all. All good rules. I mean, kind of a traditionalist. I could have done without the intentional walk rule, but uh, it's not something that I'm going to complain about. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, something that you know, I've, players have always wondered about that for years and years. Why don't they just say, "Take your base"? <laughs> Let's move on. Now they can. You you can still throw the pitches if you want, but. I don't think that's going to happen. Mitch Moreland on deck. Ooh. Oh, that was awfully close. And if it was off the plate, Cervelli does such a nice job at presenting it. Doesn't he, doesn't he make it look good? I guess it's technically a strike. It was very close. But, but he made that look so good. You want real quiet hands, I think. When you, you want to make that pitcher look like he's got good control. Don't always be stabbing at the ball. Once the ball hits the glove, the, try and make sure the glove doesn't move after the ball hits it. And a lot of times, if the ball, if the glove moves, you're kind of moving the glove out of the strike zone. And if you're not, if you're trying to grab it and bring it back in the strike zone, well, then you're kind of telling the catcher or the umpire. Well, it was a ball, but look, I've moved into the, into the strike zone now. So just nice, quiet hands. Moreland deep to right. And McCutcheon against the wall. Saved a home run. So McCutcheon saved three runs tonight, my book. Doing a great job in right, keeping it scoreless. Because of Andrew McCutcheon, we stay scoreless. Uh, off the bat, this one uh, it looked like it was in the bullpen, but cuts back and right up against the wall. It's only about what is it? About five, five and a half foot wall, something like that. So he reaches up and keeps it in here. Doing a nice job and right tonight, helping out Tyone. All right. 
Let's get him a run. Yeah, he's pitching his heart out. Let's go. Cervelli struck out his first time. Sales a pitch count higher than Tyone's through four scoreless. 68 to Tyone's 54. Early in the season, though, the pitch count's usually a little bit more conservative. World Baseball Classic. That should be the tiebreaker for the next tournament. Lowest pitch count after <laughs> 10 innings. That's kind of goofy how they start the innings with the base runners, but. Hey, it's in, in, uh, in know, an effort to preserve the pitching. I absolutely I understand. understand why they do that, and yeah. it makes a lot of sense. And a lot of strikes from Sale tonight as he fans Cervelli for the second time. Half a dozen strikeouts for Chris Sale. Well, one of the reasons he's thrown a few more pitches than uh, Tyone has is it takes a few more to have the strikeouts up there. And he's got three pitches that he can command. I mean, it, it's hard to know what's coming, I would imagine. Josh Harrison struck out back in the second. That change up. Looked like it. Painted just off the, <laughs> off the corner. I mean, not only a great arm action, lack of speed, but the location was perfect. Out toward the monster, and that ping means it's a base hit, and no more on a good play by Ben Intended. Oh, that's gonna say, who's out there? Yastrzemski. <laughs> yeah, it looks like he's been out in that outfield for a while. The ball up in the air. You know, the left. And, and Jay, hey, it looks like he's running really hard off the line. I mean, he knows it might be held to a single, and certainly was. He's always trying yeah, to push yeah, two. Yeah, he's not. He's not taking a double for granted at all. There. Carl Yastrzemski, number eight. All those years in left. And he gets the ground ball to get out of it. One of the game's best. Tough not to crack. Thing. And this, the jersey and bat from the 1960 World Series. Bill Mazeroski's iconic uniform is going to be going to the Heinz History Museum uh, thanks to Thomas and Alba Toll of the 
part owner of the Steelers, uh, bought it uh, a few years back, and they wanted everybody else to have a part of it. And it's going to be the most valuable piece now in the museum, which now everybody can share. I think that's fantastic. I'm glad that it's still around. I didn't even know that it had been floating around still. Been preserved after all these years. Now obviously, that not only you know, a great moment in pirate his, history, but that's one of the the top moments in the history of the game. Yeah. Period. And I can guarantee you that the folks in Boston were cheering along with pirate fans that day as well. I don't think so. <laughs> Heated rivalry with the Yankees. Chris Young is in there tonight for Mookie Betts, who is ill. Flu symptoms going around in the Red Sox clubhouse. I'm sure James Tyon doesn't mind not facing the MVP runner up tonight, but he has done a well of a job so far against this really good Red Sox lineup. Walks the leadoff man, the second base on balls issued tonight. MLB.tv Premium is back and better than ever. You can watch every out of market regular season game live on more than 400 supported devices. Plus, you get a free subscription to At Bat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Or you can watch it live. As many Bucko fans have done, there's a lot of Bucko fans out here in New England, too. Run into a few this week. I used it today. Look back at some moments. During the you did? Opener. It's really a very handy thing to have. There's some Bucko fans here tonight. Taking a picture of us. Hello. And he's got a decent lead over there. Right on the edge. And it's a real pirate. Walked up here from the harbor. Shoelace delay. Gets ahead. So much from Tyone is right on the edges. Yeah, it, it, I tell you, it really uh, frustrates hitters too because it, you, when you've got that kind of control. You're going to get the benefit of the doubt quite often and get those calls and like you've seen these last two. You know, if you're a guy that's all over the place and then you do see the catcher having a lot of hand movement, stab at the ball here or there, you're not going to get those close pitches then called strikes. But uh, you prove your control. You prove you're going to be around the plate. You got a catcher that's not making it look like you're wild. It's got the quiet hands. Get those calls. I like when Bradley looked back at the home plate umpire and said, Hey, you need glasses. I have glasses. Oh. I guess it was a strike. There would be a time where the umpire would not wear glasses, right? <laughs> yes, it would be. It definitely would be a time. I don't know what the scattering report on this guy is, huh? Keep the ball away. <laughs> Everything. Big time home run hitter last plate, year. Off the plate, yeah. off the plate. Got to be careful away here to a lefty, though, don't you? That uh, left field wall. So close. A little looper toward the wall, and it could be extra bases. Young is running. And it's hit past Harrison. And the Red Sox have runners at the corners and nobody out. Tyler, no. 
and have to try and pitch his way out of a little bit of trouble now I, I still think it's early enough in the ball game where you're thinking more about staying out of a three run inning than you are stopping that one run at third base. That's one of the rare times that he's been in the meat of the plate. He could have caught a break there. It would have been a nice line drive double play, but Jay Hay couldn't quite reach it. This is both teams' best chance tonight. Pablo Sandoval bounced out his first trip. Oh, he was going for the downs. Kind of chase one a little bit. That ball is a little up and in. He's swinging that first pitch. I think he might have done tie on a little favor there. Sandoval had a great spring, but does not run well. And in this situation, right, you midway through the ball game, you'll take yeah, that's it. two that's outs. For that's the what run. I was saying. That you're not close enough to the end of the ball game where you're really concerned about that one run. You're more concerned about getting a double play ball here, making sure they don't have a multi-run inning like they did in yesterday's ball game. If they score one run here, just okay, no big deal. You know, we were going to have to score one anyway, so <laughs> just. Make sure you you don't give up two, three, or four runs in one inning, because that's the kind of inning that beats you. That's what happened in the fifth inning of the first game. It became a five-run frame. We'll tie on ahead. Now with a one-two count. Now this is where he can maybe play with the strikeout pitch a little bit. You know, take one one shot at it. See if he can. He's got a pitch to work with. Because if he can't get the strike out here, well then, now well maybe he can get out of this and still have a zero up on the board. This is an important pitch for him. That's your coach Ray Sirich looking on. Jerry Cora to his left. Cervelli. If you got something in your uh, in your arsenal, you think you can get a strike out on this is when you try to use it. Back foot slider. See what they choose to do. It's like they're going up and in where that first pitch was to start to. Yep, same spot. He got the strikeout. Beautiful job. Again, Tyone shouldn't be doing that at the age that he is. And Cervelli, he won. Okay, up and in fastball. That's where we got the swing and miss for strike one. I think if we go back up there, we can do it again. And sure enough, he put the glove up there and Tyon drilled it. Now, Mount Conference here. Now, Garrett Cole was pitching so well in the opener in that fifth inning. That's where the game got away. Here, Tyon trying to keep this scoreless, or at least very close. First and third, and nobody out now, one away. John Farrell and Clint Hurdle matched up. Well, in that fifth inning yesterday, it was Leon, the batter here, who laid down a bunt. Now, trying to get a double play ball to get out of it. Not particularly fast, he can be doubled up. Well, with Kung Fu Panda up there with a the one two count, he's sitting there thinking, All right, I want to throw a strikeout pitch. What can I do? Now it's changed to what do I have that I can throw? I can get a ground ball on. That's primary concern right now is get that ground ball so you can get the double play. Now he's Paying a lot of attention, uh, you, you don't want the runner to get the second, lose the ground ball opportunity. So they're doing a lot of uh, throwing over to first base. 
Bradley stole nine bases last year. If they uh, still had the old fake to third, you'd probably see that a couple of times. Right? Bradley's running. It might have been a hit and run there with my own kind of expanding the zone. Yeah, he's, he's wanted to pitch way out of the strike zone, uh, almost in pitch out area. So I think you're right. Well, Tyone added that two seamer last year in the minor leagues. Something that he didn't have before. Can that help him get a ground ball? Oh, absolutely. If it's located properly? Absolutely. I mean, that the, the two seam fastball, because of the way the seams are spinning to cut the wind, they don't cause as much lift aerodynamically, so gravity you know, has a chance to pull that ball down a little bit more than the four seam fastball. The four seam fastball will stay straight a little longer because of the aerodynamics. The way the uh, the ball is spinning and where the, the seams are cutting through the wind. So anything that has a little drop to it, it's, it gives you an opportunity to maybe get the ground ball. And now he's ahead of Leon, one and two. I wonder if they would try to do the same thing here now. That it's, Back in a strikeout position, would they go up and in with a fastball? See if they could throw it by him like they uh, they did with the Panda. Longest inning pitch-wise for Tyone so far. Yeah. Put down a two, and then somebody changed their mind. <laughs> Called timeout. Two would be curveball. Well, it's like a, a back foot pitch. Back to back strikeouts for Tayo. It's like, I mean, Cervelli must feel like he's playing one of those baseball games on the, with his thumbs on TV. LA <laughs> well, wants fastball in, boom, there it is. He called for a curveball, you saw him point. He, he, he's pointing out there, he goes, make sure you throw it down. I want a back foot curveball here. There it is. Swing and a miss. Tyone is advanced. I would like it right here, sir. Executed the pitch perfectly. Yep. I mean, it's it's fun to watch Jamison Tyone. All right, not out of the woods yet. One more to go. Real toughy and Dustin Pedroia, and that'll move up the runner as Bradley gets into scoring position. That's it's odd to see him. Be, he, he was so fine with his control for two hitters putting the ball exactly where he wants and then the start to hit <laughs> look where that ball went that hit in the middle of the left hand hitters batter's box at curveball I guarantee you that's not where he was trying to throw the first pitch of the bat anywhere close to that Cervelli saves a run here in this nothing nothing game yeah, that would have been horrible for all that good work to try and save that run make the strikeout pitches and then have it I'll go away on a wild pitch. Good job for Cervelli. Ooh, 96. Yep, good fastball there. But the whole thing that has happened here was getting to two strikes with Sandoval and then being able to make that pitch, the fastball up and in when you really wanted it, right when Cervelli wanted it. That has set up this whole scenario where he might be able to get out of here and put up a zero. 1 1. Ooh. And he's ahead again. Dustin Petroya, one of the league leaders last year in batting average, a former MVP years back. Veteran leadoff hitter for the Red Sox. One for two tonight. Tyone a strike away from getting out of a first and third no out jam. Second and third with two away. And he's going to get out of it with nothing. Jamison Tyone and his big stage here tonight able to get out of it and keep it scoreless. And let's go back to our.
Brown, what a job pitching out of that jam. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned it right there in the beginning, nobody out, runners at the corners, that you don't worry about that one run. But, uh, heck, you just try and get out of the inning and, and keep it a one-run ball game. But once Jamison got two strikes on Sandoval, he said, heck with that. Uh, Cervelli made the decision, fastball up and in, try and get the strike three, and the execution was there. And, and then it, it kept on going, too. Another strikeout, and then a little weak tapper back to the mound. I mean, that's outstanding big-time pitching. That's, that's what the elite guys do. And Tyone, as the number two starter in this rotation, being asked to pitch like an elite pitcher. Matched up against Chris Sale in his first start of the season on the road at this historic ballpark against perhaps the best lineup or one of the best lineups in baseball. There's something to watch. Frazier tonight has one of the three hits against Sale. He did so well, did Frazier last year against lefty pitching. It doesn't matter. He had 417 against lefties in his half a season with the Bucks, and he'd grown up with facing his father, who was a lefty, uh, in a, all that backyard batting practice. Thinks that might be why. This sale is awfully tough, and that look on his face says it all. I don't think he. Is. Agreed with the call. He thought this ball stayed inside. Just kind of nipped the corner, though. Chris Sale, seven strikeouts, still scoreless. Now this has got the kind of a postseason feel tonight. It's game two of the season. It's cold, kind of like uh, it would be in October. Well, that one didn't miss being a home run by much. <laughs> Anything that's hit that high, you know, you're only about a quarter inch on that baseball from driving it. And uh, you don't have to drive it very far here. <laughs> Not when you hit it the left. Well, Josh Bell narrowly missed a home run in the opener. Within a, a foot at most. The top of the wall there, the green monster. What does it say? It's 310 down the line, right? 310. But I am, I want to see that measured. I have to eyewitness the tape on that one. It, so it feels believe very snug. <laughs> Marte has struck out twice tonight. So looking for his first hit of the young year. Good sound, but foul. Taking a shot at the pesky pole. Yeah, it is narrow down the lines here, but there's different advantages to both. I mean, uh, you hit it down that right field line, you got to get it right down the line. Otherwise, it is a pole. Very shallow areas. It's a very deep area. 420, the deepest part. Right there in that nook. We have the triangle right of center field. One of the rare times that Sale has been behind on the count and he still gets the out. And he has picked up a couple of quick innings. Still nothing, nothing.
defense mattering so much and Andrew McCutcheon has been very very good tonight in right had a very strong accurate throw of the plate uh, cutting down the first uh, run that Red Sox tried to score and then they, this catch here I, I'm sure that ball was up over the fence he brought a home run back that ball would have snuck into the bullpen so there's another couple runs there there's a plus minus is looking good so far <laughs> Yeah, second game ever in right field, and yeah, it does look pretty comfortable out there, Tim says. Save three runs. And Ben Intendi is aboard. Well, Tyone, who worked his way out of trouble last inning, has got a man aboard here to start the sixth. He had first and third, and nobody out and got out of it without a run. Ben Intendi sounds like an ice cream flavor. <laughs> and just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in the game brought to you by Miller Lite. Make sure you keep those in the ice chest back there. I don't want them to warm. Oh. get warm. <laughs> I, was, I was teasing one of the vendors he was bringing up. Uh, some beverages uh, for his stand tonight. I said you can just leave them outside. You don't even have to put them in the cooler tonight. Temperature 39 showing here. And Intendi aboard for the first time. And you just bundle up a little bit. Maybe have a coffee like that, gentlemen. Some chowder. I can't believe they sell chowder in the stands. I gotta, I gotta see this. All right, all right. Got my eyes peeled. Let's see if I can find one for you. <laughs> Xander Bogarts just lined out, and David Freeze made a terrific play on him in the fourth. There it is. They sell clam, clam chowder. chowder. How good would that be? Well, right I'll now, be. Huh? <laughs> I should never doubt you, Bob. Want some chatter? Chatter, yeah. So far, not no takers. Oh, well, there's some empty uh, spots there. Sold a few. Yeah. Maybe they've already had their chatter. There's no such thing as too much chatter. Yeah, I know. None of that lousy Manhattan clam chowder here either. Yeah, you want some chatter, eh? Dollar twenty-five, please. Do, do you get the little uh, crackers? Or anything you better or? get oyster crackers. Yeah. yeah, that's an extra quality. You know, it's 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 a buck and a half, not a buck oh. twenty-five. Okay. All right. Bogart's talking with Paul Nart. Saying I can't hit this guy. <laughs> You see how much that ball moved? The fastball just jumped right in at me. How's he do that? All the hitters have been saying that tonight. Strike three call. He's had the Red Sox hitters cross-eyed tonight. A little breaking ball in, catch the inside corner. Same thing that Sale did to Frazier. A nice presentation by Cervelli again. Try to make the hitter think that ball's inside. Make him give up on it and hope it moves in in time. Five strikeouts for Tyone. Benintendi after the leadoff single. And then Ramirez. The only guy that Tyone has not solved tonight. He has singled and walked. And a bigger lead over there. Benintendi. Miners last year stole 16 bases and 
about 100 games. No triple A, right? Never played triple A ball. About a, about a year of minor league baseball. That's it. Never been an Indian. Been intended. No. Oh. <laughs> There's one and there's two a double play and Tyone is rolling here tonight. He has shut out the Red Sox through six. Baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by the Chevy Traverse and your Western PA Chevy dealers. And by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go, Bucks! Here at Fenway Park, all the history of the logos. And so far, a lot of zeros put up on that scoreboard out and left. Andrew McCutcheon will try to change that. He's taking some away tonight. Out in right field. What did you say? He's a plus three tonight? Plus three. I'm not sure how that works, but <laughs> sounds right. I could say he's taking a two run home run away and threw out a runner at the plate, so plus three. Ahead in the count. And it's even. Sale at 90 pitches. And it's full on McCutcheon. Every sale's last inning, don't you think? Yeah, usually early in the or, season. Yeah, yeah. Be conservative pitch count wise. No action yet in the Red Sox pen. Waiting for a phone call. Got their winter beard still. Hopefully, we won't see the guy on the left tonight. Kind of broke in his bat. Yeah, I can tell by the sound that was off the end of the bat. Didn't go anywhere. The leadoff man gone in the Pirates seventh. And a look at our day automotive this day in Pirates history back in 1974. The Pirates lost to the Cardinals on opening day, but Richie Hebner homered twice off Bob Gibson. And then the Bucs took the lead in the tenth when Willie Stargell singled home Richie Hebner, but the Cards scored two in the bottom half to win it. The grave digger, Richie Hebner. From Boston, isn't he? 
I don't know. Is that right? I believe so. But he used to. Uh, that was his off-season job. I think the family business is. Yeah. Somewhere here. Providing a place for our loved ones to uh, to rest, and building up your forearms while you're doing it. So last time I checked, the digging in frozen ground was no easy uh, <laughs> task. Is that Legos? Wow. Don't step on one. Wow, yeah. That's, well, that probably took some time to put together. Nice salute by Polanco in the opener to Big Poppy. Well, Sale has been behind the last three hitters. Let's get close to 100 pitches. Might be a little bit of a, a sign. Get to the end of his gas tank. Polanco running hard. But two gone. Who will blink first tonight? Well, we told you it would be a marquee pitching matchup tonight, and so far it has lived to that billing and then some. Sale in his Red Sox debut has limited the Pirates to three hits. The Pirates have not been in scoring position tonight. But Jameson Tyone. Put up zeros too. David Freeze has one of those three hits. He's singled back in the second. Last time up hit one pretty hard and lined out the short. I need somebody to hit a home run, don't we? Yeah, that, that, that might be the whole thing tonight. Could be. Right now, quiet. Tyone at 84 pitches through six. Red Sox bullpen silent too. I can trade that in for some chatting. Is that Wally right there? Hey, Wally. Wally. Wally's the green monster. Much better than a, a sock. <laughs> Please take a sock. No. <laughs> no swing. A big, yeah, a big sock puppet walking around. Ah, that's not as good. That's that's good. The green monster. Wally right. the green monster. That's that's good. It's kind of nitpicking, but it's kind of a generic look, though. You know, it just could be any monster. <laughs> well, he's green, and it's yeah, not easy. But the the face is just like not okay. Sending mirth and enjoyment to all. That's even better. The parrot. That's a generic looking about the no. parrot. You know right away. Okay, that's a parrot. Three two to freeze and he'll get a board with two outs. First walk issued by sale tonight. He was upset with himself. He tried the bare hand throwback. Ended up dropping. I don't know if you want to bare hand a ball tonight, do you? So he was giving himself a good talking to also after he got the ball. And for the first time, the Red Sox have the bullpen active. It's the one part of pitching on a cold night that's not fun. Open phone rings and your name's called. Matt Barnes getting up. You got to get loose <laughs> in that weather. I hope you had already done something to get you close. Out to Young. And we will go to the stretch. Scoreless tonight. Sale v. Tyone. Nothing, nothing.
Pirates need Tyler to be big, and he has been tonight. Oh, he certainly has. And this that fifth inning uh, where he came up with the big strikeout, that was just uh, could be the, the well, the, I was going to say the big play of the ball game, but there's also we talked about the big plays that McCutcheon made. But yeah. I'd say that is so huge. Uh, I, I said the next inning that that's, you know, what the elite guys can do. They can get out of trouble like that. And. And he's it matching just, Chris uh, Sale. It, it, it just looked like a guy that has been out there pitching for three or four years. Not not somebody that doesn't even have a full year in the major leagues yet. Uh, it just uh, his mound presence, everything, the command control, the quality of his pitches. He is lacking nothing. Those guys both drafted in that 2010 draft sale made it to the major leagues right away coming out of college. Tyone out of high school. Of course two years. Because of injury he did not pitch. Right now. In this game tonight. They are matching one another. Moreland. Narrowly missing a home run McCutcheon. At the wall taking it away from him. His last time up. And it looks like Sale is going to be done after his seven scoreless tonight. Certainly did his job. In his Red Sox debut, they paid a big price in prospects to get him from Chicago. And so far after day one, he's lived up to the billing. And Tyon dispatches Moreland. I mean, nothing. He's phasing Jamison Tyo. Slow curveball. Perfect spot for it. They get that ball where it bounces beyond the plate but in front of the catcher. Get two strikes. Six strikeouts for Tyo. Chris Young. He's still got pretty good velocity. That was a 95 mile an hour two seamer. Nicasio, the righty, Bastardo, the lefty. I would imagine that this would be Tyone's last inning, and I'm sure he'd love to complete that. This will be number 90 coming. And he's ahead one and two. Talked about it as this thing started up. Red Sox going to go with Matt Barnes. Tyone uh, undaunted by all the other potential distractions around him here in this game and his pitch, like like you said, he's been here a long time. Yeah. Well, the hitters uh, have been overmatched today, tonight. The weather, of course, has not done them any favors. They hate hitting in the cold weather to begin with, and then they had to face the, the likes of Tyone and Sale. But a tough night, uh, no matter what uniform you're wearing, swinging the bat. Tyone has walked his third now. One on with one out. And you can catch the Bucks in their first home series of the season this Saturday. When they take on the Braves at 7:05. If you're one of the first 20,000 fans through the gates, you receive a Francisco Cervelli. That's Samore singing bobblehead presented by Allegheny Health Network. For tickets, go to Pirates.com/bobbleheads. You know, I just noticed the look on his face on the bobblehead. It's kind of like how he looks at the umpire sometimes after <laughs> after a pitch has been called that he doesn't like. That's that's his look. He gives the umpire. And he has done a great presentation tonight as well, working with Tyone. Now look at this. You've got the lefty swing Bradley up. Bastardo ready in the pen. He's going to stick with Tyone. And Tyone gets the out. Another mark of the confidence that Clint Hurdle has in this young special right hand. Oh, he's still uh, very strong. I mean that. That pitch, uh, 95, fly out the center field. So it, there's nothing wrong with the uh, the arm strength right now. The only thing is it's you know a cool night early in the year, 
And they're going to be conservative, just like the Red Sox were with Sale. This will be his last batter, I would think. He wants to finish yeah. the end, right? Yeah, most likely. Pablo Sandoval, a switch hitter, so there's no platoon advantage going to the pen. And this is also, I think, an opportunity for Tyon to, to get that confidence, right? I mean, hey, this is your game. You've been pitching great. Get this final lap. Let's go to the eighth scores. We're going to need you all year. You're going to be one of our horses. And gets the weak contact. Still recovers to get Sandoval. And Jamison Tyone has shut out one of the best offenses in baseball through seven innings. To the eighth, still scoreless. From the main coming to stage A April 24th. And here tonight, great ball game for you. Nothing, nothing as we head to the eighth. What a treat if you've come all the way in from Pittsburgh for this one. Tyone and Sale, seven scoreless. Now to the bullpens with Matt Barnes. You see Mar uh, Barnes' numbers last season. Not too bad at all. I think you got to. Uh, be a little, uh, little patient. 31 walks in uh, 66 innings. You need some kind of a little something, maybe to give you an edge. Maybe it'll be a base on balls. Make sure he's throwing strikes. Again, coming out of the bullpen, cold night like this. Are you, are you really as loose as you need to be? Especially at you know, Jay Hay right now, leading off. He's got one Look, of the hits tonight. Watch him swing the first pitch. Nope. Usually does. Patient. But now you got a strike, so now all bets are off. And you just have to swing the bat. Yeah, that single one of three Pirates hits tonight. They haven't even been to second base. But that was against Sale. And Barnes feared on Monday. The second snap hook fastball tonight. And then Bell and Frazier. If it gets there, Mercer singled against Barnes on Monday. He would be due up fourth. Chris Sale tonight, seven shutout innings, a walk, seven strikeouts. And now Daniel Hudson looking like he'll pick up for Tyone. 95 pitches tonight, seven scoreless of his own. Likely be through. 
to center. Bradley right there. And one away. How about getting a run so that guy can get a win? He deserves it. Got out of some jams you know, tonight. That last out he made where he dropped the ball. No panic in him. I mean, you know how desperately he wanted that ball. He wanted to end the inning, but you see some guys will just like as soon as they drop it, it becomes that hot potato. I can't pick it up, can't pick it up. And he just realized, okay, I made a mistake. I dropped the ball. Got calmly, saw the ball running. Calmly got down there, picked it back up, and took the time that he knew he had and threw the run around. He was ace like tonight. And he got out of a first and third no out jam with a couple of strikeouts and a weak tapper. And Josh Bell. Really the only pirate to really drive a ball so far in the series. That was on Monday. And he hit the ball off uh, the top of the monster. He's the only pirate. I should say uh, Cervelli had a uh, double off the monster too, but he's the only pirate to, to really drive an extra base hit. Ahead of the count here. Josh Bell in his first opening day on Monday. So Pirates will be relying a lot on some of these young players. Ross Cervelli catching a great ball game tonight. Two two from Barnes. Definitely worked him up upstairs with the heaters. Two in a row up there. Let's take a look at our Nissan road ahead and in the finale Chad Cool will get the nod against another talented youngster Eduardo Rodriguez of the Red Sox. Our coverage begins at one right here on Root Sports. Full start of the opener on Monday. Adam Frazier. Has one of the three hits tonight. Infield single back in the third. Hitting 400 as he did all spring. <laughs> and an easy play for Moreland. Gonna need to put up some more zeros. Bottom of the eighth coming up from Fenway. Nothing, nothing.
the Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And the uh, tradition here at Fenway Park in the middle of the eighth. Let's go, Bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Now they really get into it uh, here in Boston. They... John Jaso, the defensive replacement for Josh Bell at first. It's been kind of copied in some other ballparks, but uh, nobody uh, sings Neil Diamond like they do here at Fenway. <laughs> Daniel Hudson pitched in the opener. New Pirate. Hard thrower. Last year with Arizona. It was at the inflated ERA last year, but uh, as you've pointed out several times, it, that really was uh, you know, came from a little small bad month. A little stretch of games <laughs> that he had where he just blew up, and as a reliever, your, uh, your ERA can be toast for the whole year when that happens. You just don't have the innings to bring it back down. Nice changeup. Leon, then Pedroia and Benintendi. Nine, one, and two for Boston here in the eighth. There's a feeling of the postseason here. Chilly and loud. Tight game. And in tight on Leon there. Hudson had a stretch where, of course, it began at Coors Field, and he gave up 31 runs in nine and two-thirds innings. <laughs> the rest of the season, about a one and a half ERA. In the other 55 games that he pitched, 70 all told last year. The Pirates signing him to a two-year deal. He will be setting up for Tony Watson. This is his role, the eighth. Trying to get us to the ninth, scoreless. And now Leon has worked the count even. Pirates brain trust. New bench coach, Tom Prince. Just to the left. Or I guess our right to Clint Hill. Stage left. Good foul. That's a fun souvenir. Bring your glove. Keep watching. Take your eye off the field now. You got a ball. There'll always be another one coming your way. So now three and two. Hudson had two strikes on Leon. Dustin Pedroia. One for three tonight. Go up next. Of Sandy broke his bat, and there's one out in the eighth. And Hudson in his debut, he's known to get the swing and miss, and he certainly did that in his first game as a Pirate. Yeah, the uh, the bullpen uh, this year is really going to be, I think, uh, hard to put in play. They're going to get a ton of strikeouts. A lot of hard throwers out there. Petroya. Nothing, nothing in the eighth. That ball had some movement on it.
Jamison Tyone went seven scoreless. Well, Cervelli did his best with that one. Didn't really move the glove, but as he caught it, kind of just curled his wrist a little bit. Tried to make it look like it was at the letters. Two oh. Well, Hudson was one of the better pitchers last year in baseball in that top 20 or so, both in velocity and swing and miss percentage. What that means is he throws hard and guys do not make a lot of contact with him. And so the Pirates saw those numbers and kind of ignored the ERA and said, we like this guy. We want him to be a big part and play a crucial role in the bullpen. Toward the monster, but shallow enough for Polanco to get the second out. Well, it makes you nervous, right? Just seeing the ball out that oh, way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hit the air to the left. Just, yeah. Immediately look at the left fielder. What's he doing? Does he got it? And even if he's at that depth, which he was, does he turn around and play it off the wall? <laughs> because sometimes they'll stop and that is a foreboding presence behind Polanco. 37 feet of fun if you're a hitter. And that is the look from the monster. You feel real small out there. A little don't you? window there between the ball and the strike. That's where the camera sits. There you go. Ben Intendi plays out there for Boston. Popped him up. And Daniel Hudson issues a one, two, three, eighth inning. We're going to the ninth inning, and we've got a good one here tonight. It is still nothing, nothing. Barrel will beat anybody's price. Find out more at Barrel.com. And by Levin's, the official furniture and mattress supplier to the Pittsburgh Pirates. For the best quality, service, and value, shop Levin's. Let's go Bucks! Very glad that you've stuck with us here tonight. We've treated you to a fun affair. Nothing, nothing as we start the ninth inning here from Fenway Park. Who will score first? And the Red Sox not messing around tonight. Well, it can't be the Red Sox because we're in sudden death now when they're hitting. Got to be us. They're going to bring on the closer in a tie game in the night. There will be no save tonight for the Sox. 
using them. For sure, Marte McCutcheon, top of the order. Mercer tonight was 0 for 3 against Sale. The Pirates still have not gotten to second base all night. But yet, the pitching has kept them in this. Felipe Rivero and Tony Watson, depending on the score. This is a big chance right here with the top of the lineup. Now Kimbrough last year, one of the best closers in baseball. There's, there's no question. But sometimes when closers come in and they're not in that safe situation, they don't perform as well. For Kimbrough, that was true in his 22 games and ERA over five in those non save situations. Right, the Pirates take advantage tonight. Ninety-eight. Oh, Ninety-seven. Got to recalibrate my eyeball. <laughs> He's a hard thrower. He's been one of the best for years now. Pass on the ball. And the leadoff man on in the Pirates' ninth. That is the first time tonight the Pirates have had the leadoff man aboard. He's kind of out of the ball game. A lot of times, it's uh, is somebody going to make a a mistake. Is that is that going to be the difference in the game? Well, there's a big one right there, an error with the leadoff man hitting. First error of the ball game. Now Kimbrel will have to work around it. Starling Marte. We talk about being due. Both Marte and McCutcheon hitless so far in the first two games of this season. Showing the bunt. Maybe some cunning. Right? Play small ball in a nothing nothing game in the ninth, right? I, you know, I, he, he showed bunt very late. I think it if he was sacrificed, it would have been earlier. I think he's trying to bunt for a base hit there, or thinking about it. Or draw in Sandoval, right? Well, no, it'll pop up a bunt. And there's a sure easy out. Wow. Well, you know what? He squirted around early that time. I think that was a sacrifice. Hmm. I'll take back what I, uh, I said just as he was bunting that, because that, that, that was a sacrifice attempt. You can see, see how early he's came around? Get above that ball, and, and really, you, if you're going to sacrifice in that situation, you want to bunt it to first, not third. You, you got the the panda all over you because he has nothing to do. Even if it is on the ground, um, he's so shallow. He's got a shot at going to second base, getting the lead runner. Should have been trying to bunt the ball toward first anyway. Now instead of a runner in scoring position for the first time tonight. And Moreland's tagged to the tied to the bag. He's got to hold Mercer on over at first. So you got plenty of room if you're going to sacrifice over on the right side. Kind of back to cut away a little bit with that breaking ball and lean back and then all broke over the plate. When a guy throws his uh, his hard as Kimball does, he really you've got to be brave on those breaking balls, don't you? He starts it at you. Another breaking pitch. Real tight slider there from Kimball. Kimball can get up there close to 100, and if that ball looks like it's coming inside, it's tough to just wait it out to see if it'll break. Mercer aboard on the air with one out. And Pedroia will get it out on a spectacular play. 
And that would have been a pretty amazing double play if they would have been able to pull it off. But I mean, off the bat, it looks like this got a chance to be a, a base hit to right field, maybe send Mercer to third. But Pedroia able to get over there and as he's sliding along, scoop that short hop up. And McCutcheon seeing that right away, he was out of the box hard. Trying to keep this inning alive. Well, Pedroia has been an anchor there for a lot of years. Gregory Polanco will bat. 0 for 3 tonight. McCutcheon didn't run a lot last year. I wonder. The right situation comes up if he would try to get into scoring position. Starting to get kind of that desperation feel. <laughs> There's not been a lot of chances tonight. Yeah, it'll be not interesting as the first month unfolds, not just tonight, on how much Kutch tries to run. Now, obviously, this would be a running situation. No, no score, ninth inning, and <laughs> two outs on first. Uh, if, if you're a base dealer, now's the time you have to go. But I don't know, you know, St. Cutch last year, and then I just don't know how much he's going to try and run this year. Still six bases last year. We'll have to, uh, I think, we'll, by the time May 1st gets here, I think we'll have a, a good handle on if he's going to try and run again. And you got almost guess breaking ball, right, from Kimball? Not going. And runs. And this will get the Red Sox out of the inning. Now that leadoff error made it look promising, but left stranded and still scoreless. Tomorrow afternoon, Chad Cool takes the mound for the Bucks against Eduardo Rodriguez of Boston. Join us at 1 p.m. for Pirates pregame presented by W.B. Mason right here on Root Sports. Well, if it's anything like this one tonight, you will be sure to tune in. Nothing, nothing as we go to the last of the night. And even the Bruins fans are. <laughs> Wearing black and yellow. They're wearing the right colors tonight. A lot of pirate faithful making the trip a special occasion to see games at Fenway Park. Now Felipe Rivero. Yeah, just a fabulous spring training. Talk about swings and misses. 
three or even really four pitches from a hard throwing lefty. They face the meat of the order Bogarts Ramirez and Moreland remember no Mookie bets tonight he's ill or at least not in the starting lineup. We'll see as this one goes forward. Yeah, you never, never can count them out since they're on the list. You can count them out. They come out, but American League, you, you just don't. You put your uh, eight, nine guys on there and you play with them. You don't need a bench. Yeah, you don't have to pinch hit for the pitcher. Bogarts robbed of a hit back in the fourth on a great play by Freeze. Also, was lined out hard tonight. In on his hands. And McCutcheon records the first out. Trying to do a get to a tenth inning. Andrew McCutcheon has been brilliant in right field tonight. Well, by your account, what? He saved three runs and, oh, yeah. and therefore he saved the ball game. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Among the other contributors, uh, yeah, good pitch, mean, lots uh, of good it's, pitching it's, tonight. There's been some other uh, things to go along with it, but a couple of nice plays. The throw was great. But... Throughout Sandy Leone at the plate in the third inning, and right now that's the difference of the ball game. <laughs> Think about that. Catch he made up against his back up against the wall. A little short right field wall. That would have been a two run home run by Moreland. Ball would have been in the bullpen. Mm -hmm. There's one out of two tonight. Shaking hands after. Ah, no, no, no. Nice treasure on pirate ships. How about Andrew McCutcheon tonight? That throw strong on the mark. Got him. This one ticketed for the seats. Gets back, gets his back up against the fence, makes the catch. What a catch by Jordy Mercer. <laughs> that one was headed for center, and that's the second out. That was a definite play of the D tonight. That was a nice play there. Great break. Anticipation. What ball, a stab. Ball probably hooking back to him a little bit. Great oh, shot. That. You could tell with that shot, he was catching that ball after it already passed him. He's really solid over there. Reaching back over the grass to make that grab. Mitch Moreland 0 for 3. Thanks in part to that. Possible home run saving catch by McCutcheon earlier. Trying to get to the tenth. Nothing, nothing in the ninth. And a pronounced shift on the lefty. That's the shortstop Mercer on the left side. The rover is freeze the third baseman. That's the third baseman. <laughs> Got an out there uh, in the first game. On Moreland. Head right into it. And he strikes him out. Pirates bullpen has been perfect in relief of Tyone. Tenth inning coming up, still scoreless.
oldest ballpark. Nothing, nothing. This is harkening back to the uh, the dead ball era, right? Uh, yes, it is. The <laughs> ball's very dead tonight. <laughs> this is perfect. Great pitching matchup tonight. Sale and Tyone now over to the bullpens. Heath Henry, the latest comer for Boston. He also pitched on opening day. I will add this, you know, they were counting on Tyler Thornburg, who uh, right. came in as uh, the Brewers' closer at the end of last year. Going to be the eighth inning guy here. Yeah, got him in a trade, but he's hurt. So uh, the bridge to Kimbrel, who's already pitched tonight now, uh, has been a little thinner for John Farrell than he'd probably like. And maybe the Pirates can take advantage. There's Thornburg on the right. On the disabled list. So David Freeze, who's been on twice tonight. Was that a Snickers bar that guy was eating? Yeah, he was turning into like a little whiny guy and he started eating the Snickers. Now he's back to normal again. Must be planning on being here a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Pirates have not gotten into scoring position tonight. Yet are alive in the tenth. This is the only pirate to have been on base more than once. Oh. Embry, the ex giant, starting to come into his own last year with Boston. Finally finding some consistency, uh, consistency at the big league level. Well, that opening day game, I thought he showed uh, some pretty good command of the slider of his, and he started out the night that same way. That number two pitch, the second pitch, was a perfectly placed slider right on the corner. But that'll help you uh, definitely turn the corner and find that consistency when you start hitting the spots like that. Is, uh, I don't know, wants to take a look. That's what he wants the umpires to talk something over here. Uh, was it catcher's interference? It might be. The count is correct. I saw Freeze. Uh, he was in discussion about something also. Uh, Freeze is talking to Cervelli about it. And Paul Nart, Fulton umpire, went up third to talk to the crew chief, Dana DeMuth. And uh, apparently they didn't see anything, so hey, in this tight ball game. Well, we're just guessing. We didn't have yeah. any idea really what they're talking about, to be honest with you. Well, that's, a, that's a good guess, though. You know, well, try was, to get a man aboard be, any be, way you can. Because Freeze was talking to Leon, and then he went back and he talked to uh, Cervelli. That's well, I was thinking that maybe. Oh, that was awfully close. Yeah, I think we might have got a break right there. Looking at the. Uh, He's used up one of the nine lives. The strike zone. That, that pitch was at the bottom of it. Didn't catch it well. And they. Uh, they don't took that one away from him, but kind of standing up. And Bogarts. Wow. Well, that was a heck of a play. Gosh, <laughs> we've seen some good defense, haven't we, in this game? Well, Freeze took one away from him earlier, and now that's payback. Awfully good play. I mean, that's from the outfield grass. Yeah, and that's uh, getting a lot on the throw, it seems to me, without planting that right foot. And that was all arm. It had a little bit of an arc on it. I mean, it has to, throwing off balance like that, but it still seemed to get there pretty darn quick. An all star last year. 
One of that part of that young nucleus that the Red Sox have, not just great hitters. This has been a game to remember tonight. All right, just hoping that the final chapter is a happy one. Tony Watson. Looks like he would get the call next. Hoping for a save chance. One swing of the bat. Could change everything, and Cervelli knows it. Well, even if you can't get one over that wall, get one off of it, maybe get the get a double. He did that Monday. Get yourself in scoring position. We could use one of those. Hasn't happened all night. Now even. Now this could be a game where the Pirates get one man pass first base all night and win the game. <laughs> that could be the case. Harrison is next. Joel Gosselin yet to appear as a Pirate. Have only drawn one walk tonight. I mean, the Red Sox pitching has been equally as good, if not better. Do you start to press when you get to the plate in these situations? No, I don't think so. I mean, the two out, like when Jay Hay gets up there, he might be. You know, thinking about trying to left one up toward that left foot fence. If he gets up there with nobody on, I mean, th there are some things you might try to do a little differently, but you're not really pressing. Another 3 2. Out toward the monster, and it is banging off that wall. And Ben Intendi is going to leave Cervelli at first. Wow. Like you said it, Bob. He looks like he has out there. <laughs> the rookie I mean, playing it, that wall perfectly. I've seen him out there for two days, and he's just like he's been out there his whole baseball career. Well, I guess he has. <laughs> it's just not had been that long. <laughs> I thought that was going to be extra bases. Yeah, that one hit uh, quite a ways. Uh, that play that Foxwood sign. Uh, he's up on top of the wall, not, or not the top, but at least halfway up. Cervelli's out of the oh, box he's hard. Going oh, yeah. hard. You know, I mean, everybody knows if you're going to hit one off that wall, you you can't jog the second like a normal ballpark. You better get going. This qualifies as one of the best uh, opportunities the Pirates have had. A quiet night for both teams at the plate. Red Sox have had a couple of better opportunities. <laughs> Pirates have hit two balls off the fence tonight. Don't have anybody in scoring position. Anderson bang one back in the fifth. Ben Attendee is a strong job. Defense has ruled the roost tonight. Here in this quirky old ballpark. Frazier played a nice left field yes, in the did. opener. McCutcheon tonight out and right. Potential game changing plays on defense. And we showed that good slider tonight. Gregory Polanco. Keep Cervelli close. Tenth inning and nothing, nothing. 
This has been the best ball game of the year. This has been a good one. <laughs> I gotta agree with you. On that. Trying to stay alive with two strikes. A ball from Bell. How about the youngster with the Willie Stargell jersey? Rally cap going. That's why he got that ball. He's got his uh, black and gold rope. He's got it all going. All everything working. Uh, the Stargell Stars. Who will earn one tonight? A game like this, there would already be a few uh, handed out after this game. It's been some uh, nice plays. Cut to get at least one, you would think. I have to believe that Tyone would be putting one on his hat. Seven scoreless innings against Sale in his debut. And the coaches kind of led by Kamara Barti. He wanted to start issuing those out in spring training. You put them on the locker or something by your name, something like that. You guys have done the MLB that. won't allow it on the hat anymore. Seen him sometimes on the batting practice jerseys or wristbands and sneak them on there. Harrison hanging in there. And where is that? Okay. One of well, that one yeah. of the longer conversations you'll have with an umpire over a over a called ball. <laughs> Leaving nothing to chance. One ball, two strikes. He's really putting together a good at bat. The normal kick the bat with the toes. I don't know if he even realizes he's like when he's doing it, if he's even. I, I, his mind's probably somewhere else. It's just automatic. Chance of we are Boston. Up in the right field corner. Two and two. Cervelli with a base hit off the monster. Embry has thrown 20 pitches so far to get one out. This will be the eighth pitch coming to Josh Harrison. The 2 2. Rest of his bat. And that will be the second out. Some souvenir. Very good at bat, but that has been the case so far tonight. As the Red Sox have had some activity in the pen. Henry, that's going to be it for him tonight. John Farrell is going to come get him. Nothing, nothing. Tenth inning. And John Jaso coming up. The lefty coming in.
And uh, who says in an American League ballpark there can't be some matchups, right? And some managerial moves. Phil Goslin's going to come up and pitch it for the lefty batting Jaso. David Price on the disabled list. Jaso just does not hit lefties. And so. Wanting to get the favorable matchup with Robbie Scott. Well, hopefully, Goslin will make his uh, first pilot at bat memorable. Huh? Picked up in a trade with Arizona in February. And it was a very good pinch hitter throughout his career. Hitting 257 as a pinch hitter. That doesn't sound like much, but that's 44 points better than the league average last year. Cervelli at first with two outs. I mean, you're coming through with a hit a quarter of the time here. Asked to. I mean, that was a pinch hitter. That's not a, a bad number. It's a tough job. Always kind of hold off. The, the one thing you have going for you, though, is most of the time your manager will be able to get you a favorable matchup as he has here going against the left hand pitcher. Scott in his ninth major league game. Was not drafted. Began his professional career playing for Jose Canseco in the independent North American League. Made his way to the big leagues now. He has to try to keep this one scoreless. Bang went off the monster for a single with one out, now two away. The Pirates still have not advanced a runner to second base tonight. One, two. And I would imagine, too, the way that Scott drops down, a lefty is going to have a lot of a lot of trouble with him. Blanco was retired by Scott in the opener. Hence the move. Yeah, that's kind of what you would think that Scott's uh, main job would be is to come in and pitch against lefties with that delivery of his. Oslin hanging in there. And that's uh, not a hard thrower. That's what it was here. Had Jay so up there. Frazier's on deck. Carl Willis, Red Sox pitching coach, former big league pitcher. And Scott wins the battle. We will go to the bottom of the tenth in Boston, scoreless.
bottom of the 10th inning here at Fenway a classic in this classic ballpark. We saw the starting pitchers go seven scoreless as Phil Goslin will replace Jaso at first. Now up to the bullpens. Pirates turning to Tony Watson. Both closers tonight uh, coming out in non save situations. Tony going to see his first action of the year here in game number two. And Chris Young will start things. Chance of Boston. Rookie Betts did not start tonight. He's ill. And so Chris Young getting the nod instead. So the Red Sox without the MVP runner up from a year ago out in right field. This has been one worth watching. Our folks making a long trip in. Will it be a happy ending? Put a smile on their face, huh? The look of concern, either that or it's a little cold. No, sir. It's that first out. It's a long throw right on the money. Because of the pinch hitting situation, Clint Hurdle having to go with Phil Goslin over at first base. Goslin has a limited amount of experience at first. He kind of backed up Paul Goldschmidt last season at first base. So you can imagine how much he got in. Six games. <laughs> Played 41 innings at first. So see how much that comes into play. And a base hit. Bradley aboard with a one out single and that's the first base runner against the Pirates bullpen tonight. Certainly the tenth base hit of the game. Which has not been uh, much happening for either team. Great pitching. Both pitching staffs doing a great job. There's been one extra base hit the whole game. That was Leon's double. And Leon ended up being thrown out at the plate, running through a stop sign. Pablo Sandoval will turn around. He was trying to do some one swing damage. Did not play at this ballpark at all last year. Appeared in just six games. Or six at bats, I should say, for Sandoval. Three games. That's it from the Panda last year. And watching ahead of him. Better numbers as a lefty batter. It's been throughout his career, power wise and batting average. Sandy Leon, the number nine hitting catcher, with the lone extra base hit in this game, is on deck. Nice pitch to strike him out. Chased it upstairs. Wasn't there some thought that he was going to maybe just become a left handed hitter? Sandoval? He backed away from it for a while. Cervelli's target right up there at the letters and Watson put it right in the glove. Tyone went seven scoreless. Hutchin a one two three eighth. Rivera a one two three ninth. Watson working with Bradley at first and two away. Leon turns around and looks at a strike.
Keep an eye on Bradley. This the first pitch to Leon. He jumped out to a real good secondary lead. I think maybe Watson saw that. That's dying fast. Bradley with two outs on the move, and he's going to get into third. The Red Sox have the winning run 90 feet away with two outs in the 10th. To trying to hit the ball that direction. He had the big hole on that side, and that was just a little situational hitting on his part. He was not trying to end the game with one swing. He was just going to inside out something that direction, probably thinking ground ball, but got it in the air and got jammed a little bit because that ball uh, did look like it ran in on him. And they were dumping in there. Two outs. The Pirates closer will face Dustin Pedroia. Former MVP. Longest tenured Red Sox player. Pretty much straight up. All one. Is there any point I wonder where the, the, the Pirates would think about putting him on. And then he got the rookie Ben Intendi. A lefty batter. One lefty. Two and all. There's Ben Intendi. He's also one for four tonight. Nothing, nothing in the tenth. Oh, out in front. A two old changer. Roy wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I thought he was going to get a uh, a fastball for sure. A 2-0 count. He can fool a guy even in his 1400th major league game. Oh, oh! Where did that miss? Man! That looked right the knees. That is a big change of events. Hey, Tony didn't react to it at all. Stoic. Yeah, that stoic. should have made it two and two. And instead, now you got a three-one count on Petroya. Well, Cervelli's out there just reminding him that hey, you got a young left-handed hitter on deck. You don't want to give in a here at all. Try to make it a nice pitcher's pitch, even on a 3 1 count. Three and one on Dustin Pedroia. Huh. That was unintentional. Well, did you see? Well, you see where the pitch is. Did you see where Savannah gave him <laughs> the target? He set up a foot outside. Ben Intendi won it for the Red Sox in essence with that big three run home run in the fifth. In a 5 3 Boston win in the opener. And he has a chance here with the bases full of Bo Sox. A career 172 hitter against lefties in his brief career. And he's behind strike one. So I guess if you're playing the percentages and the little that we know about Benintendi, this is the way to do it. He's faced a lefty 29 times without an extra base hit. And he cracked his bat. We're going to the 11th. What a ball game here in Boston tonight. Bend but don't break, Tony Watson. We're still scoreless.
that way because of some great plays tonight from Andrew McCutcheon. Yeah, cut with the uh, strong throw of the plate to stop one run. And uh, this catch right here stopped a couple more. Mitch Moreland sending one to the wall with Jamison Tyone. Matched Chris Sale tonight. Yeah, you got a you know, first and third, nobody out. That's a tough situation. And uh, he had a couple great pitches for strikeouts and then the little tapper back to the mound. Uh, that uh, was just a phenomenal job by Tyone to, to get out of that jam. And that basically is why it's nothing, nothing. Those plays we just showed you. And we're no better than when we started. Clear the scoreboard here to the 11th. You've been treated to a good one, folks. Adam Frazier, a lefty batter. They don't uh, leave in the lefty Scott. Instead, the right-hander Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly, a uh, long-time starting pitcher. I remember when he came up with the uh, Cardinals, throwing gasoline. Now exclusively out of the pen. Yes, it, it, it turned out to be the. Uh, the pitcher, I thought that he was going to be the first sign with St. Louis. It was a very impressive young hurler. Still throws very hard. So Frazier, Mercer, Marte. I remember what the Cardinals traded him. I was like really raised my eyebrows at that he, one. He and Alan Craig for John Lackey. Why are they giving up on these two really good young players, right? I mean, well, Alan Craig was a 300 hitter, and he was just starting to decline a little bit. Well, Kelly, for, for me, was the big, big one. I mean, I young, high 90s throwing starters. <laughs> they don't, yeah. you know, that had success his first year with them. I, that was a big surprise. But sound the ball playing in at third. They uh, it turned out good for the Cardinals. Any uh, reason why you think John Farrell went with the righty here facing the lefty? Frazier? I don't know. I really thought that uh, Frazier would have to face the lefty just you know, start the inning off anyway. And uh, bring Kelly in. Maybe Kelly. Uh, I mean uh, the they, splits they, don't tell you that. I mean Frazier hits lefties even better than he does righties. So. Yeah. Maybe they, they, they feel comfortable with Kelly starting innings not necessarily bringing him in, in the middle of it. Scott, who has only pitched in eight ball games in the major leagues, you don't want to have him up and down yet, perhaps. And Frazier's already in his young major league career. Have kind of, uh, gotten rid of the platoon splits. Jaso was lifted for a pinch hitter because his career numbers against lefty pitchers are poor. Frazier hits them both. Trying to get aboard to start the 11th. Pitchers getting squeezed here as we get a little later on. That one was out of the zone. Now full. I've repeated this many times, but it's worth saying again the Pirates have not gotten a runner to second base tonight. Yet are still alive here in the 11th. So fantastic defense. Jordan Mercer's had a good play tonight. Great pitching. Now they need a little hitting. And 3 2. Frazier is the first out. Well, that fastball 98. Kelly certainly does still possess that good heater. Red Sox finally giving up on having him be a starting pitcher last year and will exclusively work out of the pen. A lot of times when you move a hard thrower like that into the bullpen, that fastball even picks up a little bit. Jordy Mercer reached on the game's only error to lead off the ninth inning. It's the only time the Pirates have had the leadoff man on tonight.
Hampshire one for eight lifetime against Kelly. Had gone on that, but Chris Guccione didn't. That's all that matters. Yeah, I'm with you. I was a little surprised to see the right hand go up. Good luck, Monster. Braves will be the Pirates' next opponent. Broke his bat. And a friendly bounce off the mound for Bogarts. Nice pick by Moore. So two up and two down against Joe Kelly. All it takes is one swing. I remember a game last year. It was kind of just plodding along in extra innings, very quietly. The nation's capital. Huh? Yeah, it was a one-one game. Marte cracked one to put the Pirates ahead for good. And he hits this one foul and out of play. At 100 miles an hour from Joe Kelly. 100. He's got Kimbrell type stuff. 100 mile an hour fastball, hard slider. It's over the. It, he's thrown at least one slider in the 90s so far. A slider in the 90s. <laughs> I threw a slider in the 90s, but it was 1991. In the decade, not <laughs> velocity, yes. And it takes a little off at 99, 1 and 1. Now you know how rock feels. <laughs> The one one bounced up there two and one that's that 90 mile per hour slider. Starling Marte hitless this season. This is the on deck hitter Andrew McCutcheon so one of these guys. I feel like are going to come through there's Kutch. he saved three runs tonight. With his play in right field. He was looking that that might have been the pitch. Tough to look breaking ball a guy that throws a hundred. Yeah. It's just he thought that was going to be uh, inside a little bit. And a base hit. Marte gets aboard with two outs in the 11th. Everything is a battle. He leaves this breaking ball up right where he left the through that last one. You know, you, you put one upstairs at the good good place to hit, and you get away with it. The, the, the hitter's kind of kicking himself, and then uh, if you come back in the same spot, he's not going to let two in a row go by. What are the chances Marte running? Uh, I would say the same odds of the sun coming up tomorrow. <laughs> 47 swipes a year ago. Not going on the first one. And McCutcheon starts off with ball one. Well, the sun might come up tomorrow, but it might not be easy to see it. Yeah, we might still be here. Nothing, nothing in the 11th. What a great ball game. Oh, the game within the game. Marte trying to get in the scoring position for the first time for the Pirates tonight. Not going. And 2 0. Oh. I bet you Kelly's thinking about Marte at first. One of the premier base dealers in the game. Threw him a 2 0 breaking ball last time. We dare to do it again. 
to Marte, I mean. Will they do it again? Popped him up. And we're going to go to the bottom of the 11th. Joe Kelly wriggles off the hook again. Still nothing, nothing. Nothing, nothing as we move to the bottom of the 11th at Fenway Park. Thanks for staying up with us tonight. And look at some of the uh, tweets tonight. I really want to raise it. Yeah. Got an early meeting tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Going to get some no, homework no. done tonight. Sorry, Dakota. No, no homework tonight. No. This is too good of a game. These are special nights. And this guy trying to hang in there on a Wednesday night in Boston and a chilly night. It's not being school a, night. It's not being a school tomorrow. These guys want to raise it. Who will score? That's all you need is one. Juan Nicasio trying to move it to inning number 12. They're really kind of getting a fill tonight, but how deep that bullpen of the Pirates is. Yeah. <laughs> they just one right after another. We might see Nicasio go uh, multiple innings if needed tonight. First, he's got to get through the heart of the Red Sox order. Bogarts, Ramirez, Moreland do up. And a head strike one. Now, this was originally. Capacity crowd 36,137. And only the Hardy remain. Temperatures have dipped into the 30s. No matter, you got a good ball game, you got a good ball game. Pack to begin. Three and one. And Bogarts, who has yet to get aboard tonight. The Sox loaded the bases with two outs in the tenth, but Watson got out of it. Ramirez is next. Strike. Nobody walks. Hmm. If they get on, they got to hit their way on. Bogarts, 0 for 5. And he's been called out on strikes twice. 
He was definitely looking for a base on balls. Now this is a, a group that wants to have a little fun on the town tonight. Hanley Ramirez. Red Sox with seven hits Pirates with five. Both Sale and Tyone went seven scoreless. That set the tone and the bullpens. Have turned away both of these teams and this Red Sox offense. We've talked about it is going to be one of the highest scoring if not, not the, the highest scoring. In baseball this season. So far, have blanked them. Two up and two down against Nicasio in the 11th. Mitch Moreland coming next. Those rally cap. Try a different rally cap. It doesn't matter what who you're polling for tonight. You get rally caps on. Everybody wearing them. Right, turn it aside, upside down, in, in, inside out, something. Moreland hit one to the very back of the wall in the fourth. McCutcheon peeled it away. Well, maybe the upside down flip with the hood. Yeah, McCutcheon tonight. Yeah, that's his rally cap. Throwing out Leone at the plate in the third inning. Completely changed the game. One run would have been it. Leon who blew through the stop sign in fact. Hey you wonder what would have happened if he would have. Held up there. Yeah. I mean, first and third for Ben and So early tonight some great work behind the plate. Really coaching Tyone through a couple of jams and. Tyon pitching his way out of first and third and nobody out in the fifth inning. Nothing came across. One run scores, and we were talking about it at the time. Hey, get a double play ball, one yeah, run, oh no yeah. big deal. Yeah, no big deal. Well, as it, it turned out, it would have been a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a uh, one nothing victory. But, you know, you can't, over the course of six months, you can't have right. use that kind of strategy. You're going to end up. Getting yourself into some big innings because you were all wrapped up and trying to stop one run. But as it turns out, he was able to get out of it with nothing. It's kind of like the, the, the when they uh, pitched around Pedroia to get Benintendi up there. Watson did. Another one, two, three inning from the Bucks bullpen tonight. Two strikeouts for Nicasio. Let's go to the 12th inning. Nothing, nothing.
here at Fenway Park. Nothing, nothing. And this has been one of those types of nights that I think we'll remember throughout the course of this season. Will it be maybe uh, as we look back at the year, a springboard to better things? It's got the feel of the postseason. Chilly night. Pitching at a paramount. Whichever team comes away with the win tonight, they're going to do a little bit of hooping and hollering in the sure. clubhouse just for a little bit after the game. Just one win. But when you play this long and, uh, and play this well, you definitely want the W. Gregory Polanco, 0 for 4 tonight. Both teams making excellent defensive plays. Go along supporting that great pitching they've been getting. And Andrew Benintendi limiting a couple of sure bet doubles to singles tonight, playing the monster well, the rookie. Pirates still have not gotten to second base tonight. Takes his one swing, but you know, 98. <laughs> It'll make your glasses fog up. That's some heat. We could use some heat right now. I'm starting to get a little chilly. <laughs> what do you mean? Chilly. Who's chilly? Somebody said we didn't look chilly. Man. I, I look chilly. I'm cold. See that? Well, you're not See wearing. You're not wearing a hat. No, I'm not. not you you got to wear a hat. That's I need my big gray coat from Chicago. Yeah. Did you give that to like a some uh, army somewhere, right? Donate to that. Bradley. Uh, it just keeps on going. Wow. The defense of both teams. You know, we keep hearing about teams paying a premium for defense these days, and the analytics that support that. Well, this is the kind of night that underlines that. Bradley uh, going low, make sure he avoids a collision. Over a slide runner of the baseball. He's and an outstanding time, center fielder. Not going to run into anybody. Now, he was playing a lot, even when he didn't hit. And now that he's become a good hitter and an all-star. Right at Pedroia for the second out. They are tough to come by. Freeze has a hit tonight. Pirates do not have more than one hit at any inning. Really singled off the monster in the tenth. Yeah, this is one of those times we're talking about changing your approach at the plate. Nobody on. And there's two outs. Try to get into scoring position. You, you look for well, look for a pitch. See if you can drive it here. You, you got to at least get an extra base hit. That's what you're going for. You get a couple strikes on, and then you okay. Let's just try and get the ball put out and play firm somewhere and, and get on base. Period. But. Especially now that you're you're out in front of the count a little bit, one and zero, you can be selective, look for something up, and uh, and drive it into a gap, or hopefully over that short left field wall, get out there and try and pull something. So really, you know, not a home run hitter, but in this ballpark, I think everybody has some power. And on a night where the runs have been non-existent. We need some more. <laughs> Come on, Cervelli. And pins and needles. Or on words with friends, depending on your vantage point. And some angry birds in the stands now after. Some close calls. Yeah, Kelly uh, has thrown some close pitches tonight that have not gone his way. 
Umpires everywhere. And they've got him the gripe. Nart, uh, especially in extra innings, is called a tight strike zone. Trying to generate some offense. <laughs> Not working. And son of all, they caught him. He almost misplayed that one, didn't he? So the Pirates turn to side for the 12th time at the bat tonight. From the main bliss it would be if the Pirates can get a run but they've got to prevent the Red Sox here in the bottom of the 12th inning game two of the season here at Fenway Park and we've been treated to a game as beautiful <laughs> as this old ballpark and some tweets after hours and AJ's birthday lasts a little bit longer we try to get you a gift here tonight and uh, Marlo a tweet near and dear to your heart Bob. that's right. Give me coffee for a reason because you're supposed to drink it all day long <laughs> and at night. Good anytime. Keeps you warm. So does Dad. Now bundle up. Nice chilly night here. Blanket weather. Yeah. Bastardo. Antonio's uh, numbers last year. We got Young to lead it off, but then the lefty Bradley, and then he can turn Sandoval around. That's why Nicasio doesn't pitch a second inning, I would presume. Better matchups. Young has walked twice tonight in there in right field for Mookie Betts. He was ill and could not start tonight. Brock Holt also ill tonight, so the Red Sox, you know, we don't ever really truly know, but they may be very limited to their bench tonight. Yeah, they, those guys could be at home, they could be in the clubhouse, uh, stretching right now. You, you, just, you can't really be guaranteed that they are unavailable to play. And while the pitchers have been used up, Getting down to LeBlanc and Williams for the Pirates still remaining, the long guys. Red Sox have three pitchers remaining, two lefties 
one of whom was also ill, Robbie Ross. Out toward the monster, but in a good spot. And Marte retires it for the first out. A little uh, missed the fairway. A little bit of breeze, I think. When that ball was hit, I looked up at the flag because that's right where the flag is. It's blown in just a little. Not that uh, that would have had home run depth or anything, but I think just a little, uh, little gust of wind right when that ball was hit didn't do it any favors. But if you get anything in the air, you're like, what is it? No. Bradley faced Watson his last time around a lefty and single. Two out of four tonight. And it's trying to get it to a 13th inning. The last time they played into the 12th scoreless was back in 2015. And the Pirates won that game in 13 innings against Philadelphia. Bastardo got the win. And the famous. Ted, Ted Williams seat here, 502 feet away. One out in the 12th. And I never really knew where that seat was tonight. <laughs> First time there hasn't been anybody sitting there. Yeah. Now this ballpark always jammed, and 36,000 plus were here. Oh. Narrowly missing, a one out walk to Bradley. So they brought in Bastardo to get the lefty out. Walks him. And now he'll turn around Pablo Sandoval. This is his weaker side. That's one thing that will happen with the start on occasionally. Struggle at times with that strike zone. Well, remember, Nicasio uh, really struggled against lefties last year. So I wanted to match him up against righties. So this makes sense with Bastardo in this inning. Sandoval tonight. Two strikeouts, two ground outs in the infield. Batting right for the second time. The Red Sox have had many more opportunities. Trying to keep him at bay again. All one. Good slide step at the time by Bastardo. Bradley's kind of jumping off there a little bit, getting everybody's attention. Don't want him going anywhere. Sound the ball one for four a lifetime against Bastardo. He is a threat to run. Oh, lunge and a miss. Kind of can't seem to get around uh, on the fastball from right side of the plate tonight. I'm sure that was part of Clint Hurdle's strategy, turning him around. The 1 1. Foul ball. Get around on that one a little bit. Too far. Bastardo's fastball, you know, 91. That's about an average fastball, maybe even a tick below average these days. Who will win tonight? Bastardo 
takes a long time between pitches. That's kind of his deal. But can this help here to try to confuse the runner? Well, yeah, and he, he takes a long time at the set position too, which really messes uh, with runners a lot. Bradley at first with one out. It was interesting at that time. You could see the shot from behind the start. He never ever turned his head to look at first. Came set, counted maybe to three, and then went home. A lot of times he'll come set, do that like count to maybe a thousand three, and then he'll turn his head and look at you. Well, they stole nine bases last year. And he's got him picked off. And the throw from Goslin arrived. And Bradley is hurting. Something happened. I wonder if he got jammed when he fell into the bag. Uh, Goslin, who has very limited experience at first base, he came in to pinch hit for Jay Show. And John Farrell brought in the lefty Scott to face Jay Show earlier tonight. That's kind of a, you know, not your everyday play if you're not experienced at first base. Well, Bradley doing what you're supposed to, just keep on trucking on that play. He might have got cleated by Mercer. See if Mercer comes down on him. Yep. Oh, oh man. Yeah. yeah, that couldn't have felt good. The cleats uh, right to your ankle. That goes as a stolen base, and I believe it will, unless they give him a caught stealing in a, an error. But we haven't heard that. It is a steal. And now time called. The winning run is moved into scoring position. Even though it doesn't go down as an error, a miscue. The first really defensive miscue for the Pirates tonight. Yeah, it's, it, you know, for me, uh, they had the out and they gave it away. So it, uh, I know officially it's not an error, but yeah, they made an error. They made a mistake. Well, they it cost the, them. They had the, the second out right there. All you had to do was just you, you make a, you know. A th you throw the ball to Mercer and he catches it and puts the tag down and Bradley's done. Seventh game ever for Goslin at first. Three two. Son of all helped him out. Baseman Goslin playing way off the line. And the outfielders converging a bit. You know, they're a bit shallow, too. Yeah, they got to. They got to be. You have to be able to have some kind of play at the plate on a base hit. So the two guys that Clint Hurdle really wanted Mustardo to get, try to use that platoon advantage, he walked them both. Well, we've got a double play uh, situation now. The, the walk with the bases loaded. So great research going to come out and have a little chat. Settle down, Bastardo. Old pitch quiet right now. Well, it's just the long men, LeBlanc and Williams, remaining down there, and coaches. <laughs> LeBlanc standing. Sandy Leon, a double and a single tonight. I remember, he was thrown out at the plate. Way back in the third inning, McCutcheon gunned it out. And now he has a chance to drive in the game winner. Bradley 
the runner at second talked with the third base coach Brian Butterfield during the mound chat. We talk strategy. There's Butterfield. He actually held up Leon on that ball at third, but Leon blew through the stop sign and was thrown out. Bradley, the above average runner at second. With one out in the 12th. No score. Rockstardo trying to keep it that way. Ooh. Why throw that ball? I have no idea what he was doing. That. Wow, how dangerous could that have been? That ball gets away, gets out in center field. Now you get a runner at the, the winning run at third and just one out. He's eat it. There's no reason to throw that. He almost threw that away. That was good awareness by Jay Hay. Whoa. The second base, uh, the only base now you don't have to throw to. That's a good start. Now, Leon does not run very well, so if you can't get that hard hit ground ball. Can be doubled up. Son of all slow runner at first. Bradley is the run that matters. Off, but instead, sole second. That one is ticketed for the monster, and the Red Sox have walked off winners. Sandy Leon gives the Red Sox a 3 0 win. This time, he will score. And a heartbreaker for the Buckos tonight. Yeah, that's uh, going to be a, a tough one. <clears throat> you know, the, to play that great defense and uh, well, really in a way, it was defense that ended up letting them down. The uh, the pickoff throw. And then Gosman could not throw the ball to uh, Converser on target. They didn't get that out. Uh, that uh, they get that out. Probably still playing. So the first runs that cross home plate come in the 12th inning tonight thanks to Sandy Leon. Leon, Leon's really gotten off to a fine start with the bat. That was a uh, pretty much mistake pitch. So that looked like it was just right down the middle. That belt high middle of the plate. And it really, it didn't take the monster for that to be a home run. That would have been out anywhere. And that was long and deep. What a heartbreaker tonight. Pirates pitched well, they defended well, but could not muster anything at the bat. And the final 3 0 Boston tonight. It's time now for the postgame show. Let's go out to Robin Teak.